God bless you, friends. Welcome to Mississippi Northern Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. It is Lab Day here in our jurisdiction. I'm Chris Colvin. And I'm Dr. Nina Johnson. Listen, we are broadcasting live from St. Luke Church of God in Christ in Moorhead, Mississippi. Today is Student Laboratory Day. This is a, a very uh, important day for the students of our Mississippi Northern Biblical Training Seminars. I want to welcome all of you. Thank you for joining us. God bless you. Angel Salter, good to see you this morning. Emily McSwain, Mary Kelson. Listen, God bless you. For the benefit of those of you who are just joining us or just tuning in, again, we want to welcome you to the Student Laboratory Session here at Mississippi Northern Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. Uh, Sister Anita Johnson, first of all, it's good to see you at the desk. I think this is your first time this, at the desk. This is my first time. Thank you for having me. Yeah, this is Dr. Lena, uh, Nina Johnson, by the way. Uh, Sister Nina, as you know, this is we're coming to the, the culmination of the 2020 uh, 324 school year. Tell us what student lab session is. Well, uh, the Coleman student lab session is the opportunity for our students to uh, perform the exercises, the ministerial exercises in front of a live audience, which is you, and also in front of our jurisdictional leadership. This is where they are able to uh, put in practice what they've learned in sessions all year. All right, so now you too at home get to critique and give your input as you're watching live. So again, this is under the umbrella of the Mississippi Northern Biblical Training Seminars. Today is basically a work day where they get to show you what they've learned throughout the week, the ordinances throughout the year, the ordinances of the church, um, the different scriptures on, 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 on our normal programs. We usually have an Old Testament, New Testament, but today you're going to probably hear like 10 scriptures on program. Each of those scriptures are related to a specific ordinance and uh, those those students are actually going to be graded on those scriptures. So everything is strategic today. So any final input before we go to the live service? All I would say is that students have really worked hard this year. So if you are on live, you're give them some encouragement as they go and they actually perform these ministerial practices and exercises because we want to encourage each other in the Lord. That's right. It's going to be a one, a wonderful time uh, in the Lord today. I want to say hello to Sister Linda Campbell. God bless you, uh, Pastor Gary Edwards. Good to see you this morning. <clears throat> oh gosh, there's a quite a bit of quite a few of you. Clinton Cooley, good to see you. Uh, First Lady Kiwanis Webster Collins, it's good to see you this morning. God bless all of you. Listen, as you're coming in, we're going to ask that you click the share button. Uh, you know Jesus commands us to take this gospel into all the world. And every time you click the share button, you assist us in fulfilling the Great Commission. So go ahead, right where you are, click the share button and be a blessing to someone today. Again, we want to welcome you to the student laboratory session of the Mississippi Northern Ecclesiastical Jurisdictions Biblical Training Seminars led by Dean Ezra Howard. What, is, what has been your experience? in this school. How have you enjoyed working with this school? Well, I've enjoyed working because in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, it talks about how you have those things that are natural before you have those things that are spiritual. Absolutely. And in the Bible college, that's exactly what students are getting. They're getting the ministerial background for the scriptures, but they're also getting practical things that they can apply in everyday life. Absolutely. And so that also applies to the ministry. And so I think it's just a wealth of knowledge and also spiritual guidance as well. God bless you. I see Bishop Albert Pass. God bless you, sir. Good to see you this morning. God bless you, Brother Marcus Smith. Guiding Light, Church of God in Christ, is on the line today. Pastor Willie Hodges, Superintendent Willie Hodges. It's so good to see you all online today. Again, we want to welcome you to the Student Laboratory Session. It is Easter weekend. Can you believe we're doing this? It's going to be a fantastic time with the Lord. Uh, we're looking to take you straight into the service, so you all be on the lookout for us. We're coming back in mid-service for our times of giving. God bless you and to enjoy today's activities. God bless you.
Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, we just want to come before your courts with thanksgiving, Father. Father God, we just want to thank you, Father, for all that you are in our lives, oh God. We want to thank you, Jesus, for your goodness, oh God. We want to thank you for your mercy, oh God. We want to thank you, Jesus, for being with us, oh God. We want to thank you, Father, for your faithfulness, oh God. We want to thank you, Father, for your love, oh God, and for your faithfulness, oh God.
We affirm our faith in the Holy Spirit. We affirm our faith in sanctification. Hallelujah. Come on, say, I believe. believe. Amen. We believe. Amen. And lastly, praise God in our devotional session, we're looking at the reading of the scripture. Amen. The uh, uh, seventh general epistle, chapters uh, 1, verses 17 through 25. Tracy Green Brown, she is a level one student. Uh, The next reading will be from the uh, first prophetic book. Chapter 9, verses 1 through 7, Brother Brandon Owens, a level 2 student, and then the Apocalypse chapter uh, 21, uh, verses 1 through 8, Sister Mildred Butts, who is a level 1 student. Let's receive them at this time. Praise God. Amen. Now, this is a little bit different, praise God, from your service where you have one scripture, praise God, but we are giving each of these students an opportunity to come forth, all right? Praise God. So bear with us, amen. Stand to your feet and receive the word of the Lord, all right? But beloved, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time. Who shall walk after their own ungodly lust? These be they who separate themselves sensual, having not the spirit. But ye, beloved, building building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ into eternal life. And if some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, eating, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Now to them that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen the word of God for the people of God. Nevertheless, the limit shall not be such as it was in the venture when at the first light affected the land of Zeba and the land of Nepal and afore did more Greece affect her by the way of the sea beyond joy and Galilee the nation. The people that walk in darkness have seen a great light. They did well in the land of the shadow of death upon them had the uh, light shining, thus that has multiplied the nation and not increased the joy. They joy before they according to the joy harvest, and a man rejoice when they divide the spoil. For this has broken the your yoke of his burden, and then staff is short the rod of his oppressor in the day of the uh, meeting. For every battle of the war, warriors, it will confront noise and grandeur rolling in blood, but this shall be with burning and fear of. Uh, for unto a child is born to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, on the increase of his government and peace. There shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and the just for his for even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will before this. Thank God for his word. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, 
Behold, the tabernacle of God is with man, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat unto the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto him, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things and will be with him and will be with his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful, and the unbelieving, and the abundant, and the murderers, and the whoremongers, and the sorcerers, and the idolaters, and all the liars, shall have their part in the lake, which burned with fire, and brimstone, which is the second death. I read from you Revelation chapter 21, 1 through 8. May God add and believe, may God add and believe, blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of the word. Come on, put your hand together and give God praise on today. Amen, amen. Thank God for the word. Praise God, amen. We certainly want to appreciate and celebrate all of these students who have uh, engage themselves in the school of ministry, praise God, so that you can better your, prepare yourselves. And even if you're not, praise God, called to ministry, amen, just to be a better servant of the Lord, amen. Praise God, more versed in the word. Want to remind you, praise God, amen, that you want to do your best, you want to put your best foot forth in everything that you say and do on today. Praise God, not to put any pressure on, praise God, but just to let you know you're being evaluated. <laughs> Amen. But look, just let God have his way, and I know, praise God, that everything will be all right. Amen. I want to also remind you, amen, all of the students that are here, level one, level two, praise God. Amen. You're actually receiving credit for being here today, so you need to be sure that you check in. Amen. Level one, you'll be checking in with Sister Frida Carradine, all right? Sister Carradine, raise your hand. All right? Praise God. Amen. Level one, you need to check in with Sister Carradine. Make sure she's got your name. Level two, you need to check in, praise God, with Pastor Darrell Dixon, Jr. Raise your hand, Pastor Dixon. All right. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. This school is completely online. Amen. And so uh, some of us, praise God, are seeing each other for the first time in person. Praise God. But look, it's good to see you. Come on, give somebody a big smile. This might be your first time seeing them. Praise God. But bless the Lord. Amen. Put your hands together and welcome, praise God, the praise team as they come. Amen. And lead us forth again. God bless. Well, come on, keep on clapping your hands. Do we have some thankful people in the house today? I said, do we have some thankful people in the house today? Come on, well, thankful people aren't quiet. Thankful people praise. Thankful people shout. Thankful people tell the Lord that we appreciate them. Come on, help us sing this, this old praise song. Lord, I just want to thank you. Lord, I just want to thank you. Lord, I just want to thank you. Lord, Lord, I just want to thank you. Help me say, I want to thank you for being so good to me. So good to me. Everybody, everybody, clap your hands. Lord, I just want to thank you. If you're thankful, you ought to be clapping your hands. He lets you live and see another day. He lets you make it here safely. Let you make it through another year of school. Somebody ought to have something to praise God for. Yeah, yeah. 
Tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I remember back in the old school, they'd sing a little song that said that I can't pay the Lord, but at least I can tell him, thank you, sir. Come on, tell him, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh! Hallelujah! Oh, 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 oh. Give him glory! Hallelujah! Oh! Praise your name! Praise your name, Lord! God. He's been good, y'all. He's been good. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless God, bless God, bless the Lord. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, it's real good up in here right about now. It's real good up in here. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, I thank you. Woo. Hey. Ah. Woo. Yeah, yeah. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The Lord truly is good. He is great. And he is greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Thank you, praise team. We thank you. Thank God for you leading us into his presence. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. We're grateful to the Lord for all that he's done for us, in us, with us, and through us, and we are just blessing God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We're going to introduce, praise God, all of our staff and all those later, we, but we certainly want to honor, praise God, amen, some specific people who are here on today, and we are blessed and highly favored, praise God. This entity goes forth because of the permission, amen, of our jurisdictional prelate, praise God, whom we honor on today, the Bishop William Dean Jr. Come on, give him a hand clap of praise, praise God. Amen. And we are certainly grateful to the Lord, amen, on today to receive greetings, amen, from our saintly mother, praise God, who is here, the supervisor of women in the person of, amen, the uh, mother, amen, Mary Harris Scott, praise God, beautiful woman in the Lord, amen, and we are so grateful to have her here, and we are just honored, praise God, amen, to be able to receive words of greetings from her, praise God. She's going to come and greet us, praise God, on today and on the program, amen. She's followed by Bishop William Dean, Jr., amen, who is not here due to other engagements, praise God. But we have, amen, the administrative assistant and superintendent, John H. Scott, praise God, amen. John Henry Scott, he's going to speak, amen, on behalf of our bishop and give us greetings. Receive now, praise God, amen, our mother, praise God, Mother Mary Scott. God bless all of you all. God bless you. You may be seated. 
It's just good to be in the presence of the Lord today. And I'm just so elated to be here to witness a great service even so far. And I know it's going to be a blessing even later on. We give honor and deficit to our dean. I gave him another name, you all. Can I tell you all? I call him the headmaster. I, I thought that would be very befitting to a gentleman of his caliber and how he conduct himself and how he conduct anything that he goes to do. He does it well. And I think he deserve a hand for a job of excellency. God bless you. God bless you, Dean. God bless our bishop who is not here. And uh, y'all can just give him a hand. Be all right. God bless all the superintendents and um, all these pastors, oh, missionaries, district missionaries are here. And, the doctor is here. We got several doctors in the building today. And this is what this is beginning of this doctorship. Being in the biblical training seminar and getting your, your certificates and getting your degree because you're going to go higher. Higher. Thank God for everybody in the building today. And I don't want to leave my husband out. Thank God for him. Y'all can clap for him if you want to. <laughs> it's an honor to be here today. And all of these beautiful students, level one, level two. And even last year we had a level three, but I guess they'll combine. <laughs> But God bless you all, and we are here to show you all some love. Uh, thank God for all the students who have come to exercise and to show us their accomplishment from attending the biblical training seminar. This is where we get our start, you all. This is where we get our beginning, coming and showing that we have uh, a love for the Lord, and we want to go further into exercising our gifts. And this is a good start, and you all have come uh, here, and we are here to encourage you and to give you our support to you for a job well done. You have come this far by faith. It wasn't so easy. You had some knocks and some giving up times. But you said, look at here. I'm going to hang in here. I am not going to give up. By you not giving up, you are here in your seats today to show that you have accomplished something from the classes. And all the time I said, you've had problems. You've had all of these things in your life. But God has strengthened you to go through. God bless these steps. God bless our dean. God bless our faculties and all of you who had a hand in training and getting these ladies and gentlemen here today, where they sit in the seat today. God has equipped you to give them what they need so they can go forth. And we have some great teachers. We have the doctors. I guess we have some lawyers, too. We have some brilliant people that is leading our jurisdiction 
for the biblical training seminar. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Thank you, faculties and uh, staff, for your endurance and putting up, I don't like that term, and having patience with these, I'm going to call them young people. Go forth. Go forth, young people. Go forth, young adults, older adults. I guess I got it then. I got it. We just thank God for your work with all of these great minds. Because I heard a saying which says, a mind is a terrible thing to waste, but a wonderful thing to invest in. We train our minds to do what we want it to do because we have that confidence. We have that confidence in ourselves. John 9 and 4 says, I must work the work of him that sent me while it is day. When night cometh, no man can work. Students, you have work to do. You got work to do. Keep reading, keep praying, keep fasting, and studying. And God will work on your behalf. You are getting prepared to do better and greater things. God bless all of you. Thank you for this time. God bless you. Would you please stand to your first feet and receive, amen, our administrative assistance, praise God. While he's coming, I also want to remind you, amen, that these services or this event is being streamed. It's being streamed, amen. So we want you to like, want you to share, praise God, and let somebody else be able to experience, praise God, on the Northern Mississippi Facebook page, praise God. All right? God bless you. God bless you. Receive now, Superintendent and Administrative Assistant John Scott. Come on, you can do better than that. Bless the Lord for him. God bless you. You may be seated. So wonderful to be blessed of the Lord, to be here, and to be a part of this wonderful setting on today. Amen. We certainly thank God for the biblical uh, Bible, biblical uh, training seminar. Amen being a part of it and of course I'm standing here because my bishop asked me to represent him I don't know if I can do that amen but uh, I am standing here we certainly thank God for our bishop amen uh, who have other things no doubt that uh, he's engaged in today the reason he's not here but we really appreciate him for his concern about the Bible school. Amen. And uh, we was blessed. We thank God for his loyalty and his support. And he is a supporter of the school. I enjoyed uh, sharing with the school during the time that I I'm going to say I tried to teach, amen, but uh, we was here uh, with the student and the interaction from the student blessed me and encouraged me and we was here, uh, Bishop Dean and I, working together since the inception of the school for about 50 years and we certainly enjoyed it. And I know that he would say the same thing, I believe, 
if he's if he was here on today. We want to thank God for our Dean, Dean Howard. <laughs> Praise God. I tell you, his father was the uh, dean when we was working, and we just had some glorious times together. And uh, you look at his roots and from whence he have come. Amen. His father was a great man who carried on this school for many, many years. And we're just grateful to be here and to be a part of it. And uh, I thank God for all of the teachers and all of the staff members who's working together in order to prepare, prepare, prepare for the ministry. Amen. Preparing for the ministry. Now listen, I, I heard one writer said that uh, the Lord himself set the plan. And I think he used that scripture there in Jeremiah 29 and 11. And he made it applicable to what he was trying to say. And he said, God set the plan for the ministry. I know my thoughts towards you. I know what I have in plan and, and uh, have planned for you. Amen. I, I want you to do better. I want you to go higher. I want you to be excellent. Amen. Exemplify excellency in the, doing your work in the ministry. But you know what? God set the plan. And when we think about the season we're in now, God came and set the plan for salvation. Isn't that right? Amen. But now you know what? We have got to prepare to implement it. And that's what we got to do, amen, when it even come to the word of the Lord. God has given us the word of God, amen. He's given it to us to share it and to bring souls to Christ. But we got to prepare ourselves so that we can present it in a way that somebody will be edified encourage, motivate it, amen, to walk with the Lord and to live for the Lord. Praise God. I just thank God for this wonderful school, and I tell you, I'm so glad for all of you that has carried it on to help our young people and those that are in the ministry to continue to go forward. God bless you, and the Lord smile on you. God bless you, Superintendent Scott. Praise God. The blessings of the Lord be upon you. And we are certainly, praise God, just blessed and highly favored of the Lord that he is doing so many great things for us. We appreciate, praise God, amen, all of the uh, laborers who are in the vineyard, praise God, to help us in this Mississippi Northern Biblical Training Seminar. Praise God, amen. The work is too massive for one person. Praise God. We thank God, amen, for the man who's at the helm of this uh, entity. Praise God, amen. Dean, Pastor, Elder Ezra Howard, we appreciate him, amen, doing a fine job. Amen, doing an excellent job. We appreciate him. Amen. But at this time, I want to ask, praise God, Pastor Darrell Dixon, Jr., if he'll come, praise God, and he's going to introduce to us, praise God, the team. Amen. This great group of people who have yielded themselves, amen, to help to instruct you and to bring you to greater fruition in the things of the Lord. Come on, let's receive, amen, Pastor Dixon. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you all today. I'm thankful to be here, to have this opportunity to stand before you. We do give honor to our bishop, Bishop William Dean, and God bless our supervisor, Mary Scott, and to all of you that are here today, and I have this task of introducing the um, staff, students, and guests. But before I go forward, um, God bless all those who serve uh, our bishop, uh, Bishop Dean, and God bless his administrative assistant, Scott, who's represented him here today. Both of them taught me in this very building, in the Bible training seminar, like he said, was very good training and very good times, and I'm so thankful 
for it today. Before we go forward, just want to recognize all of our jurisdictional officials. They're listed in your program, but many of them are here today. If you would, please stand and let's appreciate you today. God bless representatives of the Sunday School Music Department, Evangelism. God bless others who are here. God bless. Thank you for being here today. I want to at this time recognize the staff of the Northern Mississippi Biblical Training Seminars. You see them listed here, and we will start with the administrative board and officers. And please, if you will, stand as I call your name. The president of the Northern Mississippi Biblical Training Seminars is our bishop, Bishop William Dean Jr. Let's give him a great round of applause today. As has been stated already, all of this happens at his guidance and direction. And then the dean appointed by our bishop to head the biblical training seminars, and it has gone to great heights under his leadership already. Many of us in this room are beneficiaries of the fact that this program, programming is now offered uh, completely virtual. You can be anywhere, not only in this jurisdiction, but anywhere in the world and receive this training. What a great benefit, and we're enjoying that. And that is no other than Pastor Ezra Howard, Dean of the Biblical Training Seminars. He's standing at this time. And he has working along with him Assistant Dean, and she is the coordinator of this laboratory session today. And that is Missionary Diana Washington. Also, Assistant Dean... Elder Sylvester Cannon, he's standing. Chief of Staff, Missionary Patricia Stanley, she's standing. And Secretary, Sister Mary Yancey, she's standing at this time. Let's give another big hand for all of the administrative board and officers. And now we'd like to recognize the faculty and staff of the Biblical Training Seminars, of which I am one. I'm going to ask you to stand, and we'll read your names as they are listed in the program alphabetically. But please stand as we recognize you for your work and your labor in this great work of the Lord, the Biblical Training Seminars. Please stand at this time. We're going to recognize you. Please stand. We're going to give you a hand. Come on, let's give our faculty and staff a hand. Yeah. Elder Antonio Arnett, Missionary Luandra Banks. Missionary Andrea Benson, Missionary Adrian Cannon, Missionary Frida Carradine, Elder Christopher Coleman, Pastor Stephen Collins, Minister Joseph Cotton, Missionary Vicki Curry, Missionary Callie Daniel, Pastor Daryl Dixon Jr., Missionary Kimberly Fox, Missionary Nakia Hayes, Pastor Milton Hamer Jr., Missionary Charleston Harris, Pastor Edgar Holman, Pastor John Howard, Pastor Mac Jamison, Sister Nina Johnson, Missionary Shirley Massey, Superintendent Samuel Sago, Missionary Angel Salter, Elder Todd Sherman, and Pastor Perry Washington Jr. Senior. Let's give all of our faculty and staff a great hand. Again, some of the students are having the opportunity to be able to be in a more intimate setting because of the virtual nature of the biblical training seminars. We have the opportunity to be together in that way, but it's so good to be able to talk face to face and to see each other in this way. And at this time, we want to recognize the students who have been working very hard to prepare for this laboratory session. And we'll start with level one students, which is the introductory level, uh, the first level of courses that are offered uh, in the biblical training seminars. We're going to ask all of our level one students, would you stand at this time for us to recognize you? Come on, let's give these students a great big round of applause. They come from all areas of our jurisdiction and even outside of it. So God bless you today. God bless you. You may be seated. At this time, we'll recognize level two students. Level two has been consolidated with even others of our levels that we have. Yeah, let's give them a great big round of applause. God bless you, level two students. 
God bless you. You can be seated. And then we have those who are what is called taking continuing education because of the coursework or the class offerings that have been expanded in the biblical training seminars. There are classes that you can even take individually to uh, focus in and hone in on certain areas, and we have those who have done that and are participating in this laboratory session today. So for all of those students who fall in that category, would you stand at this time and we'll recognize you. Come on, let's give them a great big round of applause. God bless you. And it's my prayer that God would bless you in each of your pursuits and that God would do what Paul instructed to Timothy he said, make full proof of your ministry, and I pray that God would do that for you even today as you further this experience in the biblical training seminar. At this time, we're going to give you back into the hands of the very capable program guide, Superintendent Samuel Sago. Let's say amen for him. Amen. God bless you, Pastor Dixon. Thank you so very, very much. Let's give him a great hand clap of praise. As we magnify the Lord, praise God. Amen, amen, amen. Thank God for these. Uh, the scripture tells us, amen, it reminds us that your labor is not in vain. Praise God, it's not in vain. The Bible also says that God don't forget. He would not forget the labor. Praise God, the work that you do for the body of Christ. Praise God, and we're certainly grateful to the Lord for each of you, amen, that are availing yourselves to these opportunities to Increase in knowledge, praise God, amen, and in the ability as the Lord has called you into. And we celebrate you, certainly, amen, praise God. Want to once again just remind you, praise God, that these services are being streamed live, praise God. And we certainly want to commend those of you who are watching, praise God, online and asking, amen, that you would like and share so that someone else can benefit. Praise God, amen. It's a wonderful thing with technology that you can be, amen, anywhere else in the world. Praise God, amen, and participate in these classes. Praise God, amen. So as you look and see what's going on, then perhaps, amen, and the next time, praise God, of registration that you'll be able to participate and motivate it, amen, to engage and to uh, end the process, praise God, of uh, the biblical training seminars. Praise God. We certainly hope and trust that you would do just that. Amen. Uh, next, praise God, we are coming to the reading of texts reflecting special occasions. Praise God. Amen. We don't uh, like to do things without the documentation of Scripture. Praise God. Amen. We want to have the doctrines, amen, documented, amen, in the Scriptures. And so, uh, we have several, praise God, entities and several special occasions that, amen, our church engages in. And we're going to ask several people, amen, to come and read the coordinating scripture, praise God, that reflects, amen, on these particular entities, praise God, amen. So that we can know who's here, so that we can know who's here Amen. I'm going to uh, call out the particular entities, and I want you to stand to your feet if you're here so that we can know who is here. First of all, feet washing, Dolores Boyd, level one. All right, if you continue standing, please, Sister Boyd. Miracles, uh, Sister Felicia Edwards, level one. All right, level two. All right. Thank all right, thank you. We'll make that correction, level two. All right. Uh, call to worship. Sandra Butts, level one, thank you. Uh, sickness, Archer King, level one. All right, we're batting 100 so far, amen. Praise God. Prayer meeting, sister, uh, that's our brother Brandon Owens, level two. Thank you, brother Brandon. Uh, revival services, sister Dorothy Colbert, level one. All right, thank you. Uh, Bible class, brother uh, Larry Gordon, level one. Amen. Offering, uh, Brother Reggie Wilson, level two. Thank you, Brother Reggie. Uh, morning worship, Brother Alvin Coleman, Jr., level two. I thought I saw you around here somewhere. Web, amen. What did I say? <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> 
Praise God. Amen. Pastor Coleman is my friend in Arkansas. <laughs> All right. Uh, morning worship, Brother Alvin Webb. Thank you. Level two. All right. Thank you, Brother Webb. Testimony service is Brother Joshua uh, Valentine, level one. All right. Thank you so much. God bless you. Amen. You can have your seat, everybody, but we're calling, amen, Sister Dolores Boyd. And if you follow in line, praise God, follow in line as you appear on program, read your scripture, praise God. God bless you. Come on, give them a hand clap of praise at this time. I'll be reading from St. John, chapter 13, verses 5 through 10. King James Version. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What do I, what do, what I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus saith to him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And ye are clean, but not all. I read St. John 13, uh, 5 through 10, King James. Amen. I will be reading from St. Mark, the ninth chapter, the ninth, um, verses 23 through 27. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe it. And straightway the father, the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thy mind unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him. And enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him. And he was as one dead in so much that many said he is dead. But Jesus looked. Jesus took him by hand and lift him up and he arose. Psalms 100, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He, it is he that had made us and not we ourselves. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm about to lose my place. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. And not we ourselves. And, and we are his people. And the sheep of his pastor. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise. Hallelujah. Thank you God. Be thankful unto him. And bless his name. And bless his name. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. I'll be reading from James, the fifth chapter, verses 13 through 15. And it reads, Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil, in the name of the Lord. 
And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven for him. Thank God for the reading of the word. I'm going to read um, Psalm 41 and 2. I wait patient for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me upon also of a harbor pit out of the mine crate and set my feet upon that rock and established my going. Amen. Pray the Lord, I shall read Isaiah 57, 14 and 15. And she'll say, cash ye up, cash ye up, prepare the way, take up the stamina block out of the way of my people. For thou said, the high, the high and the low one, that inhabitation, eternal, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and the holy place right. with him also, that is of a country and a humble spirit. And to revive the spirit of the humble, and to revive the spirit, to revive the heart of the contrary one. I'll be reading uh, 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show thyself approval unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. From the King James, Malachi 3 and 10. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be a meeting in, be meet in my house. And prove me now, herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive. I'll be reading Psalm 63, verses 1 through 4, the King James Version. O God, thou art my God, early would I seek thee. My soul thirsted for thee. My flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. I'll be reading, I'll be reading to you from Isaiah 26, chapter Verses 3 through 4. The man stayed on God. That will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he's trusted in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. the church say amen. Amen, amen amen we are certainly grateful to the lord and thankful to him for the word of the lord amen you know i think that it's important that we are careful to not do anything in the house of the lord that's not sanctioned by and in the word of god am i right about it 
Praise God. We're living in times now, amen, where the people seemingly are operating more of an uh, entertainment mentality amen. rather than, amen. praise God, an anointing. And it's important, praise God, that we stay with the word. Come on, give God a hand clap for the word. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you and God keep you. The Lord strengthen you. Uh, let me make this observation, praise God. If you are part of the discipleship team, amen, the discipleship team at the end of the program, praise God, you need to be sure to contact, amen, past, uh, uh, evangelist and elder Carlos Johnson. Elder Johnson, would you raise your hand? Is he here? Okay. Is he? All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Behind me. Amen. Praise God. Amen. If you, amen, are a part of evangelism, Amen. Then you need to be sure to contact Elder, Amen, and Evangelist Carlos Johnson. Praise God, Amen. Dynamic man in the Lord, doing a great job in evangelism. Praise God, Amen. He has seen you happy and preach you crazy. Glory to God. Thank God for him. Amen. <laughs> we are grateful to the Lord for him. Praise God. Look, Amen. Your name was probably on program, and it still is. Praise God. It's time for the ministry of giving. Amen. I wonder how many people are excited and glad about giving on today. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, that's kind of poor. That's kind of poor. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 If you want to be blessed, you've got to learn how to give. Amen. God has stopped creating. Amen. He works with the seed now. All right. Praise God. He's already created. It's already there. And if you want to be, if you want increase in your life, then you need to sow a seed. Praise God. Look, our dynamic dean, praise God, he's coming to uh, invite us, praise God, into this opportunity to give and to sow. And I want you to receive him now. Praise God. Amen. The dean of this, amen, entity, praise God. Amen. Pastor and Elder Ezra Howard. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand of praise this morning. Come on, clap your hands, all you people. Let's go ahead and do the rest of it. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. For this is the day the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in this day. How many are glad to be here today? It's good to be here. It's good to be on the planet earth <laughs> amen amen god is good to us and uh we certainly thank god for you god bless our uh saintly mother amen she gave me a new name i might have to give her one one day but not right now god bless <laughs> god bless our mother mother uh scott and we certainly thank god for her taking time out of her busy schedule uh, to be with us on today. Come on, let's give her another hand. Amen. Amen. And certainly, uh, God bless uh, her husband, who is also administrative assistant, superintendent, John Scott. And uh, I feel like, as I guess sometimes we kind of talk a little uh, 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 jovially because uh, we've been, I've been knowing them so long since I was a baby. And uh, before we had the state temple, before we had the dormitories and all of the hotels, they will stay at our house. And we had to get out of our bed for them and they cheering. But I tell you what, those were some wonderful times, some beautiful times. And so we feel like, you know, I actually, honestly, when I was a little child, I thought they were my cousins. I thought they were my, I thought uh, Superintendent Scott was my uncle and, and Mary Scott was my aunt. I actually told people that. And I, I was I was uh, in first grade when I realized, wait a minute. <laughs> Somebody told me, they're not your cousin. I'm like, they are my cousin. But I'm just saying, that's how long I've been knowing them and uh, we have certainly been enjoying each other for many years. Praise God. Well, uh, it is giving time. It's giving time. I want to share my appreciation. I will do a little bit later, but certainly to all of the faculty and staff. And I know he read the names, uh, but the names are just the surface 
uh, the work that goes on with our Northern Mississippi Biblical Training Seminars uh, goes on year-round. It is a 12-month um, activity for our faculty and staff. We don't get off. You know, we so, do have a time that we're not teaching, but while we're not prayer, teaching, we're getting ready okay. for the next semester. And we have many of our uh, faculty that are not just faculty, but they are faculty and staff. And some are faculty and staff and administration. I was really put, putting in all, uh, all hands on deck. Uh, I, and I don't want to recognize any one particular person, but I want to let you know that they are working um, harder than I am. Uh, make me feel like I need to do a little bit better. But I want you to give another hand for our faculty and staff. Thanks, Thanks for the point. Mm -hmm. oh, that's great. Good. And we have a lot more, you know, innovative and initiatives coming down the pipe. And so we hope that we're able to do some great things in the future. I want to read a scripture, um, and it applies to all of us that are here, and it applies to uh, this occasion and this particular setting. Hebrews 6 and 10, it says, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have showed toward his name, and in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And this is what we do. And it is a labor of love. A lot of times we attribute that statement, labor of love, to those particular areas that we may not be getting paid for. And you just have to say, you got to love it. You really got to That's love true. it. Even if you're getting paid for it, you still need to love it. Your passion needs to be there. And what our passion is, is to minister to the saints and to minister. We minister to the saints and we minister to the sinners as well. But we want to, I want to point out a couple of points that I got out of that particular scripture. He says, God is not unrighteous to forget your work. And that, and that statement there, it implies that it is wrong to forget somebody's work. Because if you forget, that makes you unrighteous. <laughs> To forget somebody, if someone has done something for you, someone has, has done a work and labor for you, it is unrighteous to forget it. I know that it's good we're quiet on that, but it's, it's wrong to, to act like nobody did something for you. Even, even our mamas told them, somebody do something for you, you ought to say, thank you. At least say thank you. But we don't want to forget what someone has done for us. But the other thing that comes to mind is, even if everybody else forgets, God will not forget. How many know there are times when people forget? Not only do they forget, they don't even think about it. It doesn't even cross their mind the, the, the labor of love that is going on behind the scenes to make things happen. But even if everybody else forgets, even if your boss forgets, your sister, your brother, your mother forgets, the Bible comforts us and lets us know that God will not forget. Isn't it good to know that God won't forget? And if anybody I want to not forget, <laughs> you can forget. I'm going to be okay. But Lord, don't forget. Don't forget about me. Like the man that was, was on the cross on his side and said, remember me. Remember me. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands and say, Lord, remember me. Lord, Lord, remember. Lord, remember me. And not only does he not forget our labor of love, there's another verse in Acts 10 and 4. And you remember the text when, when Cornelius called Peter to his house. And he had this vision, and Peter had a vision going on simultaneously. And Peter ended up at the house of Cornelius. And Peter told Cornelius, as he looked on him and said, Thy prayers and thy alms. And what are alms? It's your money. It's your giving. 
Say your prayers and your giving are come up for a memorial. In other words, he was telling Cornelius, God has not forgotten what you have given. When we give, God remembers. And he remembers whatever we give. Because he tells us when we give, it's going to be given back to us. So he remembers not only what we do, but he remembers what we give. I don't know about you, but I don't want God to forget what I give. <laughs> You want to give something, God can, God can multiply anything. But, I, you know, I was pretty good at math, and I, I understood that when you multiply zero, <laughs> you're going to still get zero. Anybody know? I know I didn't get to the high. I ain't got no doctors in math. But I, if, you, if you got zero, you multiply it. You're going to end up with zero. You can multiply by a thousand. It don't matter. When God says he's going to give good measure, press down, shaking together, and running over, he wants to multiply what we give. But we want to, we got to give him something to work with. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so we have an opportunity here to give God something to work with. Because he's not going to forget and it may not come in the form or fashion that we gave it, per se, because when Cornelius gave and he prayed, uh, his whole house got filled with the Holy Ghost. I don't know about you, I believe that's a good blessing right there. I mean, everybody in the house, everybody in the house, even the neighbors, the guests, the visitors got filled. They were speaking their tongue. Because of his prayers and his arms. So what we give today, God won't forget it. He's going to give it back to us just like we need it. We want to ask that you would, if you will and can, to give at least $25 in this particular offering. And I know when I said $25 for some of you, uh, it may be uh, a grave disappointment because you had intended to give more than that. And so we do, we do not want you to be disappointed. I'm not here to break your heart in that manner. So give according to as God has, has placed in your heart to give. And $25 may just not hit the mark. Um, and then some of you, you may say, well, $25 is a stretch. Uh, but we ask that you give your best offering. And I, let me say, if $25 is a stretch... You need to stretch. <laughs> you need to exercise. Amen. Because if you can stretch, you can go a little bit higher. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's stand at this time. Amen. Giving is an exercise. The more you give, the better you get at it. The stronger your giving muscles become. We thank God for each of you. Uh, I do understand that uh, Mother Scott and, and uh, Superintendent will have to leave a little early, but they're still here. But he's already given me an offering on his behalf. He didn't know exactly what time he need to leave until he asked his wife, so I know how that is. Okay. Thank you so much, and they're giving $100 each. If you notice on the screen, there are uh, different ways to give, and I will be sharing uh, 300 on today. And you can give as God has prospered you. I'm going to ask Elder Washington to come, if he would, um, to assist. We, we have, uh, who's doing the prayer? Uh, down there, Grill, level two. You can come on at this time, and he's going to pray, and I'm going to ask Elder Washington as well as um, uh, Pastor Collins, if he would come and just help assist uh, at the stage area, and if anyone needs change or any assistance, they will do that. So after we pray, uh, you can come uh, from wherever you are, and we'll lay the gift on the 
on the stage in front. And uh, God bless you. Come on, uh, Minister Green. Gracious Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, Lord, for this day, O oh Lord, and this time, O oh Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask you to look on each and every one today, O oh Lord Jesus. Lord, you have gave us traveling mercy, O oh Lord. You have brought us here safe and sound. Now, Lord, I ask you to look on each and every one that given from their heart, O oh Lord Jesus. Even the one that don't have the gift, O oh Lord, we ask you to pull out a blessing on them, O oh Lord Jesus. To open the windows of heaven, O oh Lord Jesus. O oh Lord, let their harvest be proper, O oh Lord Jesus. Lord, we just want to thank you for it, O oh Lord Jesus. In your name, amen. Thank you. You can come at this time uh, from the rear, if you don't mind, and uh, we will follow suit. If you are part of the Call to Discipleship team, please see uh, Elder Carlos Johnson right here to my right. Come on, clap your hands for that opportunity to give. At this time, we're going to take, um, we'll actually need to take a quick break as the um, the team sets up for the skit that's coming up next, they want to set it up. So if you're part of the skit, then we're asking you at this time to uh, get ready. So if we can just, you, you don't have to go anywhere, but we're going to give them time to set their skit up front and center. So I guess it may be a good time if you need to take a quick break uh, but they should be ready in just a few moments.
All right. God bless you. God bless you. Can you put your hands together one more time, everybody? I want to appreciate you for being patient with us. Praise God as we reset. But this shows the innovative mindset, praise God, of the Mississippi Northern Biblical Training Seminars. Praise God. Amen. We're favored with a skit on today from the students. And uh, we want to recognize them. And Dr. Nina Johnson, praise God, who is the production coordinator. God bless you. Amen. Uh, the skit is called The Acts of Life. Praise God. And we're looking at missionary Patricia uh, Stanley, who is the author. Uh, finance manager, Jasmine Park. Uh, communications, Chrysanthemum Stevenson. Leadership, Dolores Boris. Effective stewardship and time management, Jeffrey Boxdale. Uh, practical Counseling, Alvin Webb, Jr. Uh, parliamentary Procedure, Darnell Greer, and Patricia Student, Joe Lord. Praise God. Amen. Receive Dr. Johnson, and she's going to lead us further. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Uh, thank God for everyone that's here on today. And as Superintendent Sago says, everything that we do has to be connected to the Word of God. So 1 Corinthians 15 and 46 talks about those things being natural before they're spiritual. And so there are some natural things that we actually have implemented into our curriculum here that can be applied to your actual everyday life. And so these courses um, that we have taken, such as parliamentary procedures or leadership and communication, those are things that you can apply in your natural uh, lifestyle and also in your spiritual work as well in the ministry. So we have, if you would um, just raise your hand when I call your name, and if I miscall it, please charge it to my head, not my heart, um, just so that the evaluators be able to see who you are. Uh, Jeffrey Barstale. We have Jasmine Park. We have Chrysanthemum Stevenson. <laughs> We have Alvin Webb, Jr. We have Darnell Greer. We have DeLois Boyd. And we have Mr. Joe Lloyd. Okay. And we're just going to, at this setting, we're just at a casual conversation. And we want you to really understand why these courses and this coursework and actually the the collaboration and the communication is so important here at the Biblical Training Seminars. So, enjoy. Hello, Saints. It's been a long time since we got together in this setting before. What's been going on? Schooling. <laughs> you learning. Oh, we've been studying the Mississippi Northern Biblical Training Center. I mean, training seminar. I'm sorry. I believe you're just as good as fit as any of us are. I mean, we're learning a lot. In my leadership principles class, uh, we're talking about having those, having those attributes that are fundamental in being a good leader, like being able to take accountability and also long-suffering and be um, server, servants in the Lord. And I, in my personal life, I found out that, that, that we just need the word. The only paradigm we need is the word. At school one day, because I'm a teacher, at school one day, my pastor had given me some Bibles, and I just put them out there. And when I put them out there, the children went and grabbed them. And now they're asking me, Mrs. Boyd, uh, you got any more Bibles? So never doubt what you can do if you got the word. Oh, that's an easy fix. 
since I enrolled in the seminar school in time management course in, in effective stewardship. I, I learned how to utilize my time and I even uh, thought about it like on my job, you know, in, 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 in every aspect of the, of the day that it go by, I've been learning how to space time out, you know, time we don't know, man. And so we know that the Lord have a timing for us as our life as, as well. So it, uh, in time management, I learned how to plan ahead mm -hmm. and work on the small thing first and plan ahead for the big thing. Mm -hmm. And so in stewardship, if, they, if you're able to manage your time, you will be a good stewardship because God only give us what he give us to enjoy what we do and, and give it back to him because he only have a time for us on this earth. So it's a, it's a good school to join. I think you should join. Oh, Eric, that's okay. The Northern Mississippi Biblical Training Seminars offers a scholarship, and by the grace of God, I was able to receive one in the fall semester. And so uh, that's okay if you if you don't have it. Just apply for the scholarship, and and, and, and they'll they'll work with you. And um, but what you need is a budget. So in a financial management class, we learn some different ways to budget. And so the ways that I like to use to budget my money is using the envelope system. So what you do is you put your expenses on the envelope and then you put your money in there. That way you don't overspend, which is a good thing because we need to be able to budget in the ministry so that the flow of the business will be correct. Well, there is no need to worry about that. You just enroll in the polymer procedure class. In that class, I learned how to make a agenda, how to write minutes, how to even plan a picnic using potter care procedures. Yeah, how to conduct a meeting. You know, I am a Sunday school superintendent, and every Sunday, this helped me to do my job even better. That's true. That's right. That's true. It is very important to everything. I have to admit, sometimes I don't know how to ask people how to do things in order because I don't want people to think that I'm incompetent. You know how it is. You know what I'm saying? You know, they can see up there and everything. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I, you know, put me on the spot and draw too much attention. You know, I clam up and even, you know, more ridiculous than before, you know. So I just kind of lay back a little bit. Yeah. Well, I can understand that, Eric. But just because you're an, un, uh, but just because you are unorganized, doesn't mean you can't tell people how to do things like you want them. I mean, as a leader, you're going to have to be able to convey your thoughts and ideas to others. So things like a memorized speech or reading from a manuscript, those are some things we have learned in the communication class. Yeah, so even for me, I'm as unorganized as any other unorganized person. But for me, I have to write it down because if I don't write it down, I'll stand up and my thoughts will sit down. <laughs> 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 so you can even use extemporaneous uh, speaking. Then that's when you write things down on a little index card or something like that. I mean, that'll help you out a whole lot where you don't have to clam up so much. I mean, write down a little thought or a little phrase or something you wanted to get across. It'll even help you out. So um, we can learn. I mean, you can even use your facial expressions, your hand gestures, or your, the tone of your voice. All of that is communicating with someone. Then if that doesn't help, you can look at yourself in the mirror or something like that. If you, if you have recorded something, you can go watch it and evaluate it, critique it. Say, oh, no, I should have done so-and-so and so-and-so. And so. I should have spoke more forcefully here and a little less forcefully here. So all of that is evaluating, communicating, and practicing it. 
And when you get ready to clam up, take you a deep breath. If you get nervous, take you a deep breath. <laughs> and then you can concentrate on the three Ps, too, because that's something else we learn in communication class, which is called practice, uh, preparation, and prayer. So you got to put preparation first, then you got to practice, and then you got to pray. And so if that doesn't help, then you use the other three Ps, which is prayer, prayer, and more prayer, sir. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So I incorporate all of that as a minister of music, if you want to call me that. I just play the piano, though. I don't call myself a minister. Uh, so, But I do have to be able to tell people what to do, when to do, and how to do. So all of these things help in that. I have to make sure that I'm watching myself to make sure that I'm not conveying the wrong message. All right? I sure think I can learn a lot from those last ones. Yeah, come on, join them. Well, I don't know if I can handle the pressure now. Oh, you got it. You know, kind of old and everything else going on in life, you know, dealing with, you know, pressure of life and everything. But I guess I know. Yeah. Yes, and um, and Eric, I totally understand that. I get that. Um, but the school has even prepared a class for that in practical counseling. And everybody, you know, is going through something. All of us uh, have something that we're going through. And if we are to encourage one another with our walk through Christ, with Christ, we are to um, have the mental know-how as well, you know, to help others from the biblical perspective. And that's what the practical counseling class um, did. Personally, you know, it helped me because I've gone through depression and anxieties and um, even suicidal thoughts. And this class has helped me to deal with that. A, a, on a biblical pers uh, perspective. Yeah. And so if we are to help others, mm -hmm. as this class, you know, help myself, we got to do it, you know, God's way and not our way. Mm -hmm. And so this class has helped me to do that. Mm -hmm. So you ought to join us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, see, you guys are learning a lot from these classes. Mm -hmm. Woo -wee. Yes, sir. I'm encouraged to try this Bible college out. Yeah, we're hoping you would say that. Yeah. Yes. I didn't know at the beginning, but I think I could join this. I could join this. Yes, sir. You'll get a lot from it. I think so. All right. Yeah, come on and join us then. I sure will. Listen, we'll see you there next year. We'll see you next semester. All right, can we give them a hand clap, everybody? If you're back with us for about five minutes, praise God, we're going to reset the stage. Praise God, amen. So just hang with us for about another five minutes. bless you on this afternoon. Praise God. Well, it's still morning. Praise God. Amen.
Amen. Come on, let's give our students a hand clap of praise. Thank God for that skit. Amen. We celebrate and appreciate the uh, author. Amen. The author of the skit, Missionary Patricia Stanley. Praise God. Amen. This woman is phenomenal. Praise God. I don't, I don't know how she juggled all the things that I see her doing. Uh, God bless her. God bless her. We're certainly grateful to the Lord for her. Amen. I mentioned earlier that we were having church, and you can't have church without the word. Amen. Come on, shout the word of God. Say it again, the word of God. And it's time for the word of God. Amen. We have four speakers. Uh, they're going to be coming, praise God, and their time limitations is set at four to five minutes each. Praise God, they're going to come, amen. They're all level two students. Uh, Ms. Pamela Hampton, amen. Pamela, are you here? All right, praise God, amen. Uh, following Pamela will be uh, Marquillis Vance. Thank you, sir. Marquillis Vance and then Ms. Jasmine Parks. All right, all right, all right, Ms. Parks. All right, thank you so much. And then lastly, praise God, we'll have Minister Isaiah Collins. They're going to be coming to share with us from the word of the Lord. But prior to then, amen, the praise team, they're coming, amen, and uh, give us another uh, song of praise. All right, put your hand together and receive them all as they come in that manner. Hallelujah. How many of you know, of you know that we're standing? here only because God, he made a way. Come on, let's just say something sweet to the Lord. Come on, worship him. Worship him. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. You made a way when my back was against the wall and it looked as if it was over you you made a way and we're standing here only because you made a way come on worship him oh say hey you 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 made a way when my back was against the wall, and it looked like it was over. Oh, Lord, you, you made a way. And we're standing here only because you made a way, Lord. Say you made a way. You, you made a way. Come on. When my back was against the wall, it looked like it was over for some of y'all. I knew it felt like it was over for me, but God made a way. And we're standing here only because, oh, you made a way. When my back was against the wall. And we're standing here only because you move mountains. How many of you know that? You cause walls to fall. And with your power, you perform miracles. And there is nothing. That's impossible, and we're standing here only because you made you move. You caused walls to fall, Lord, and with your power, you perform miracles, and there is nothing yet that's impossible, and we're standing here. Only because, say you, you made a way. If you made a way for you, come on, help us say it. You made a way. When I tried and I couldn't fix it, but God, you 
made a way. When I didn't see my way out, Lord, you, you, you made, and I don't know why. Still made a way for me. Don't know why, but I'm grateful. Oh, 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 oh. Don't know why, but I'm grateful. Come on, let me see some grateful people. Come on, whisper some sweet words to the Lord. Lord, we love you. Lord, we thank you. We don't know why, but God, we're so thankful. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. Thank you for making ways. Thank you for keeping our minds. Thank you for keeping our hearts, Lord. God, we appreciate you. And we say, don't know why, but we're grateful. Lord, we don't know why, but we thank you, Lord. We don't know why, but we're so grateful to you, Lord. Don't know why. Lord, you've been so good. You made so many ways, you open doors, you keep on keeping me, yeah, yeah. You made a way, don't know why, but we're grateful. Oh. And we're standing here only because you made. We're standing here, come on, stand, if you know that he's made a way. Oh, Lord, and we're standing here only because you made. And we're standing here only because you made a way. You made a way. You made a way. You made a way. Oh, you made a way. Come on, you know he did. You made a way. You made a way. We thank you, God, because you made a way. You made a way. You made a way. You made a way. You Come on now, bless him. Thank him if you know that he has made a way. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. There we go. Hallelujah. We thank God because he made a way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The house has been addressed. Amen. Say, they covered me. Amen. So everyone has been acknowledged here today. And I will go into my prayer. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity. Anoint these lips of clay. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. My text will be coming from Judges 4, 4 and 9. However, I will only read verses 8 through 9. You may be seated. Amen. I'm sorry. Stand for the reading of the word. I'm sorry. Okay. And Barak or Barak 
said unto her, If thou wilt go with me, then I will go. But if thou wilt not go with me, then I will not go. And she said, I will surely go with thee, notwithstanding the journey that thou takest shall not be for thine honor. For the Lord shall sell Sisera into the hands of a woman. And Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. Amen. I read for you Judges 4, 8, and 9, and the Lord's word is blessed. You may be seated. Amen. My title is The Call, The Command, The Courage, and The Promise to be Delivered. So here we have Deborah, a wife and an anointed judge. She sat under a palm tree, judging the people of the nation of Israel, whom God had sold to King Jabin because of their continuous evil. God called Deborah to give Barak, an army commander, a prophetic command to lead an army against Sisera, who is King Jabin's army commander. Barak, Barak didn't have the courage to go alone, so he refused to go unless Deborah would agree to go with him. Deborah accepted the challenge. She understood the assignment that God's promises will come to pass. The call, the command, the courage, the promise to be delivered. Because Barak was afraid, Deborah had the courage ensuring him that this is a prophecy from God. Deborah also needed Barak to know that if I go with you, you will not get the honor of defeating Jabin and Sisera because she had to let him know that God had already said that he will sell the Israelites into the hands of a woman. So during this battle, God called Jabin's army to become confused, and Jabin ran into the tent, a tent of a woman named Jael. Jabin was thirsty, and he asked Jael for something to drink. Now, Jael could have given him a glass of water or even a glass of Kool-Aid, but she gave Jabin a glass of milk, and we all know that when we drink a glass of milk when we're sleepy, it's going to rock our baby right to sleep. Amen. And so while he drank that milk, Jabin went down. It rocked him right to sleep. That milk was soothing. And while Jabin was asleep, J.L. drove a nail straight through his temple and unalived him. So remember, this battle is not yours. It belongs to the Lord. Jesus is a promise keeper. Romans 8, 31 says, what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who shall be against us? So to level one and my fellow classmates in level two, I just came to encourage us, including me, that we must heed to the line. The call. When God gives the call, how will we answer? Will we let our yes be yes like Deborah with no hesitation? We must be confident in the Lord. We must go if we have to go alone, if we have to go scared, but do it anyway. 2 Timothy 1 and 7 says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. The command. God has given us the command to go out and win souls for Jesus Christ. Will we go or will we be like Barak? Refuse unless someone goes with us. Luke 14, 23 says, and the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. The courage, we will allow, will we allow the Lord to use us? Be courageous, be committed, be committed enough to complete the work, be humble enough to ask for assistance when needed because ultimately God's promises will be delivered. 2 Corinthians 1.20, for all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him amen, unto the glory of God by us. In my conclusion, because, you, because we are called, Romans 8.30 says, moreover, whom he did predestine, them he also called, and whom he called, them all, he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. So class, we have a job to do. The North Mississippi Biblical Training Seminars has equipped us to be the men and the women for the job. Be blessed.
Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and redeemer. Glory be to God. The house has already been addressed, but I do want to give honor and respect to my pastor, Superintendent Robert Fleming, Sr. Let us go expeditiously into the word of God coming from the book of Philippians, the fourth chapter and the 19th verse. Philippians, the fourth chapter and the 19th verse. But my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And for the few moments that I have, I want to pick the subject, but my God, hallelujah. Life is full of uncertainty, confusion, strife, disappointment, rejection, hurt, and all kinds of pain. And that things happen in this life simply due to life just being life. And oftentimes the enemy tries to throw, throw things in our way to throw us off course. But one thing that I found true to be in this Christian walk is that God is some kind of God. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. No one can intervene, brothers and sisters, in the way that God can. No one can change a situation the way that God can. No one can resolve a matter in the way that God does. Why? Simply because God is God and God alone. Glory be to God. When taking a look at this text, Paul is writing to the Philippians, encouraging them to stand fast in the Lord. And in this short text, we can see the nature of God and how God is merciful towards us, Paul, in particular. Glory be to God has a firsthand experience of God through various trials and circumstances. From being a prisoner even to a shipwreck, Paul personally learned the nature of God through experience. So we can firsthand, we can firsthand relate and connect to what is written. The Bible says, but my God shall supply all of your needs. To supply simply means, brothers and sisters, to make available to someone or simply to provide. And according to the Strong's Concordance, the Greek word for supply, pleru, which means to make full, to fill up, to cause, to abound, to furnish, or to supply liberally. He's letting us know that he will fill up our cup and we will never lack of a thing. He assures us that the Lord will supply and we don't have to worry about a thing. Glory be to God. And if you keep on reading the scripture, I already feel my strength. If you keep on reading the scripture, the Bible says according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Not according to our wants and needs, but according to his riches and glory. God is fully aware, brothers and sisters, of what we need, but he gives according to his riches, his knowledge, his will, and his understanding. See, God doesn't look over or beyond our requests, brothers and sisters, but just simply he knows what we need, how we need it, and in the manner that we ought to receive this. Therefore, he provides according to his knowledge, brothers and sisters. It'll be a shame for God to bless us with a thing, and because we weren't ready for it, we handled the blessing prematurely. We lose it all in one motion because we didn't allow God to cultivate us for what he had prepared for us. So instead of complaining, Lord, when will you bless me? Why don't you try saying, Lord, prepare me for what you have prepared for me? The Bible says in Jeremiah 29 and 11, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Instead of rushing God, brothers and sisters, to trust and believe that he will provide according to his riches and knowledge, his riches and glory. Glory be to God. He knows what we need. He knows how we need it. And he knows the fashion and manner that we ought to receive it. That's why it's necessary, brothers and sisters, to trust God and his timing, brothers Brothers and sisters, y'all know the saying, he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. Glory be to God. And as I get ready to close this short message, can I leave you with just one phrase? But my God. Why don't you look at somebody and say, neighbor, but my God. You may be going through something right now, but my God, you may be going through a situation, but my God, you may be going through a storm, but my God, you may have problems here and there, but 
my God, trials and tests just can't seem to get no rest. But my God, brothers and sisters, God will bring you out. God will bring you through. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Anybody in here know that God will make a way out of no way. My time is up, but I thank God for providing for me. I thank God for keeping me. I thank God for saving me. Look at somebody and encourage them and say, but my God. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. Amen. Luke chapter 4, verse 38, and it reads, And he arose out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. And Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever, and they besought him for her. I come to encourage you today to suffer well. Have you ever suffered hardships that made you have to fight, fight in prayer, fight in worship, fight in praise? Have you ever been in trouble and didn't know what to do or who to call? We ask ourselves, when is this hardship going to end? How much longer do do I have to deal with this unpleasant experience? I'm sure we all have gone through some unpleasant experiences that made us ponder these questions. What does it mean to suffer? Suffer means to experience or be subjected to something unpleasant. Well means in a good and satisfactory way. 2 Timothy 2 and 3 tells us, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Paul Paul is encouraging Timothy in this verse to expect persecutions and suffering and by the grace of God endure them with courage, constancy, and patience. I come to encourage you on today to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ and to suffer well. Why suffer well? As we look at the beginning of Luke chapter 4, Jesus himself had to deal with some temptations. He was led into the wilderness by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah for 40 days and 40 symbolizes testing trial or probation period it also means transformation and a change from one great task to another Jesus endured the attacks by the devil through the power of the Holy Ghost using resistance with the word somebody say suffer well Soon after his attacks, he began his earthly ministry in Galilee. He then traveled to Nazareth where he grew up. There Jesus told those in the synagogue his purpose and why he was there. But they rejected him. Say, suffer well. Jesus kept going in spite of his challenges, looking past the pain to purpose. He then goes on to Capernaum, where he taught in the synagogue and cast out a demon. After Jesus left the synagogue, he goes to Simon, who is Peter's house, in Luke 4, 38. Simon's Peter's wife's mother was dealing with an issue. She was sick in her body with a high fever. A fever doesn't make you sick. A fever occurs because it's our body normal response to fight what's making you sick. I want to ask you a question. What is your normal response to combat suffering? Is it complaint? Is it why me, Lord? Or do you count it all joy when you fall into trials, knowing the testing of your faith is producing patience? Suffering produces substance. When you fight through the hardship, 1 Peter 5:10b says that after ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish strengthen, settle you. Say, suffer well. Psalm 34 says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered in him out of them all. Simon Peter 
Peter's wife's mother had a situation going on, but they knew who to call on Jesus. Second Peter 2 and 20 says, but if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. Now that you know why you should suffer well, I'm going to share a few of many ways to suffer well. To suffer well, we must be patient, be persistent, and offer praise. To suffer well, we must be patient. Romans 12 and 12 says, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. As we go through suffering, we are commanded by Paul to rejoice in the future glory to come, which should push us to be patient while we are going through and to pray without ceasing. To suffer well, we must be persistent. Hebrews 12 and 3 says, for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Jesus went through it all, yet he was faithful unto death. To suffer well, we must praise. Psalm 34 and 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. As I close today, people of God, remember you're suffering well for his glory. To suffer well, we must be patient, persistent, and praise. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for we shall reap if we faint not. Thank you. Somebody shout, suffer well. Suffer well. Quick way to prayer, God, we thank you for this time. God, I ask that you let your word come forth with boldness and clarity to convict souls unto salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Quickly to the word of the Lord found in the book of Luke, the 23rd chapter and the 26th verse. And it reads as thus, and as they led him away, speaking of Jesus, they laid hold upon one Simon, a Cyrenian coming out of the country, and on him they laid the cross that he might bear it after Jesus. And for a subject for these next few moments, God gave us called to carry. All right, in the first part of that verse, it says, and they laid hold upon one Simon. Uh, the other verses says uh, compelled in the other synoptic gospels, but I like this one because it gave in detail how they got a hold to Simon. Because it's hard to talk somebody into doing something that they don't want to do if they don't have a force opposing them. So this verse said they laid hold upon him, which means they had to apply physical force to get him to do what they wanted him to do. And I don't know about you, but I have been laid hold upon by God to accept the call into ministry. The main reason we are here today is because God laid hold upon our hearts, laid hold upon our minds, thus giving us, and we have accepted the call that God has given us. The next part, it says, coming out of the country and on him they laid the cross. I was just minding my business just as Simon was, and God, he laid the burden upon me. How many of you that God just laid the burden upon you? They laid upon him the cross, and it, it, simplified the, it symbolized the burden that they gave, the burden uh, of souls, the burden of wanting to see people saved and delivered. I don't know about y'all, but that's why I accepted the call to ministry. The next part says that he might bear it after Jesus. And this reminds me of when Jesus said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. And Simon had to give up what he was doing. He was a father. He was just minding his business. But they said, come on here. Let's carry the cross. And so it says, he says here, let, if any man come after me, let him deny himself. I had to get, forget about me. I had to forget about what I wanted to do. It says, and take up his cross and follow me. This is Jesus speaking here to uh, his disciples, but here in this context, we see exactly his words being manifested by Simon the Cyrenian. Historians record that Simon of Cyrene began preaching the gospel and was martyred. And here Simon took up the cross and followed Jesus as he was led to be crucified. Now this same Simon accepted the call to carry the message of the cross until death. And that's what I've come to care, encourage us here today, to carry the truth and the message of the cross until death. 
Though we weren't privileged like Brother Simon to physically carry the cross of Christ, we've been called to carry the message of the cross. And as I go to my seat, I would just encourage us today to carry the message of the cross until death. God bless you. Come on, can we put our hands together and bless the Lord for the word? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. Powerful word from each of these four speakers. Amen. The preaching of the gospel, amen, is for the saving of souls. Praise God. And so next, amen, we're going to have our Jewish dictional evangelist. Amen. The elder Carlos Johnson and the evangelistic team, they're going to come, praise God, and offer the call to discipleship. Receive them at this time. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We ask that at this time, if you all would stand, please. Stand at this moment. We've enjoyed service thus far, but we dare not miss the opportunity to offer Jesus at this time. Someone may not know him, and we are thankful for this opportunity. We heard the message called to carry. And Matthew 16 and 24 lets us know, then Jesus said unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow Now that we heard the call, now we're going to hear the call. You already got the call. Now you got to hear the call. Revelation 3 and 20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and I will sup with him and he with me. Been reading one word. Not, uh, 10 and 9 and 15. If you want to know, I want to like, how do how do I answer the call? Is that that, that I doubt that, that if, uh, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Uh, for with the heart man believe unto righteousness, and with it in thy mouth confess ye made unto salvation. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone. There's a cross for you and me. They told you that Jesus was calling when they said, Behold, he stands at the door and knock. If you hear, not only is he knocking, but he's also speaking. Not, ah, Ibabasha, Ibabasi, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Jesus, not only is he knocking, but he's also talking. Carlos, John, Rachel, Deborah, Michael, can you hear me? I'm not going to kick down the door, but if you open up the doors of your heart, I'll come in. I'll sup with you. I'll love on you. I'll make it. I'll mold you. I'll make something new into your life. There is room at the cross for you there is room at the cross for you the millions have come there is still room for a one there is room at the cross cross for you. There is room at the cross for you. 
there is room at the cross for you. The millions have come. There is still, still room for one. Oh, there is room. There Jesus is calling, he's calling you. 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 Jesus is calling. 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 Jesus is calling. Calling. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus just now. Oh, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus just now. If you are not saved on today, you've been called to carry. You've been called to carry, but you have got to answer the call. He's not going to kick down the door. He's not going to force himself on you. But you've got to deny yourself. You've got to deny your ways. You've got to deny your thoughts. Take up your cross and follow him. If there's a one in here on today and you don't know the Lord Jesus and the parting of your sin, You've not accepted him as your savior. Lift that right hand wherever you are. Be honest with yourself. Shouldn't lie to nobody, but especially don't lie to yourself. Be honest with yourself if you know that all is not well with you and your savior. Lift that right hand if you want to be saved on today. The, elder, the last elder, the last minister that came, he said, answering the call is simple. Just confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and thou shalt be saved for whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord. Hey, hallelujah. No matter what color you are, no matter what condition you're in, you can be saved on today. Elect Lady Curry Nunn is responding. I see Elect Lady Curry is coming with the um, offering of prayer for anyone that wants prayer. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Why don't you just lift those hands towards heaven? Come on, God has been good to all of us. He's been mighty good. He's opened so many doors. He's made many, many ways. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we give you glory on today. We give you all the honor. We praise your name. Hallelujah. For you are worthy. You are worthy, God. We thank you for our very life, God. We thank you for the calling. Hallelujah. As we answer the call, God, we ask you to strengthen us. Strengthen us, oh God. Cover us, oh God. Protect us, oh God. Keep us, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We say, have your way. Come on, have your way. Have your way. Tell God to have his way. Hallelujah. Let your will be done in me. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Now we take authority over every ruling spirit, every principality of darkness. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, all the powers of darkness, we ask God to break the powers of darkness over your life today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That you will yield yourself as a vessel. Hallelujah. To be used of God. Hallelujah. Say that the Lord rebuke you. The blood of Jesus is against you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give them the courage, God. Hallelujah. Give them the strength, Lord. Give them the power to stand and to endure hardness as a good soldier. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we speak life. Come on, we speak life. We speak healing. We speak deliverance. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Now tell God thank you. Come on, tell him thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God I'm saved. Thank God I'm saved. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm saved. By his power divine. Oh, oh, hallelujah. Hey, woo. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, come on, you might as well go ahead and give it to him a little bit. Come on, come on, come on, come on. One, two, three, give him praise. Yeah. Jesus! Hallelujah! I'm saved by his power divine. I'm saved to new life sublime. Life now is sweet and my joy is complete for I'm saved, saved, saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a blessing. What a privilege. What an honor it is to have our sins forgiven. Praise God. To have, amen, a hold on eternal life. Glory to God. Thank God. Thank God, amen, for the evangelistic team. Praise God. Evangelist Carlos Johnson. Praise God. Amen. The Jewish Dictionary elect lady, amen, Dr. Vicki Curry, God bless you. Amen. And those other students, praise God, who were a part. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. School ought to prepare you. It ought to prepare you, praise God. Amen. For what God is calling you for. 
Amen. And this has been an opportunity for you to engage. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Look, this has been this has been practice. Amen. Hallelujah. But we want you to go forth, praise God. Amen. And certainly the more you do it, the better you become, the more comfortable you become. Praise God. But I find, amen, that one of the most important things besides all the prayer and all the learning, praise God, is to keep yourself before God. Hallelujah. Keep yourself before the Lord. Stay in God's face. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Paul said that the letter killeth, but it's the spirit that makes alive. Amen. You can learn every, every scripture in the Bible, praise God, but if you ain't got no anointing to go with it, hallelujah, glory to God, amen. You just It's just like you saying in Easter speech, glory to God, amen. But we want to be effective, we want to be effective. It takes the spirit of the Lord to break and to destroy the yokes, amen, and to give a listening ear to what you've got to say. It takes the spirit of the Lord to touch the heart of the people, praise God. So God bless you, God strengthen you, and the Lord keep you. Amen, amen, thank God, thank God. Next, praise God, we've got on the program, praise God, the evaluation overview. I mentioned earlier, praise God, that you've had, amen, some uh, people, praise God, that have been evaluating, and they're going to give an overview on today as to what they have seen, amen. And we certainly want you to receive it. Praise God. Amen. Receive it. Praise God. In the manner that it's given is not to discourage you, is not, praise God, to tear you down. Amen. But you've got to be able, in the process of learning, you've got to be able to accept, amen, constructive criticism. All right? Praise God. I'm not sure exactly how they're going to do it. Praise God. But I'm going to give it to them. Amen. Our value is for today. Amen. It's been, praise God. Amen. Uh, doctor and missionary, district missionary, Nakia Hayes, praise God, amen. Pastor Edgar Holman, Jr., amen. Missionary Andrea Benson, Elder Antonio Arnett, missionary Charleston Harris, and Pastor Steve Collins, praise God. They're going to come in that manner and uh, give unto you, praise God, their overview Amen of what they have noticed on today. God bless you. Receive them at this time. God bless you. Um, I appreciate you students for your hard work. All right. So I evaluated the acts of life, that gospel. And so I want you all to remember in Daniel's the sixth chapter in the third verse said Daniel was preferred over the presidents because an excellent spirit was in him. So no matter what you do, no matter what you're assigned to do, make sure you do it in a spirit of excellence. So uh, let's see who we have. Let me find it. Jasmine Parks. Girl, I, I didn't think you could talk until you got up here and brought the word. Chrysanthemum, I knew that you can talk. Project your voice. Don't hold back. If it's in you, let it out, okay? The lowest board, I think you did an awesome job. You were very articulate, and I can appreciate that. Uh, Brother Barksdale, hey, keep up the good work. I appreciate you talking, and, and I, I, I like godly men. Amen? Uh, Brother Alvin Welp, I'm not sure if that was your personal testimony, if that was a script, but you convinced me, and that's what's important when you're in a skit to uh, portray what you're acting. So I was very convinced about that. All right, Darnell Greer, you are Sunday school superintendent, and you have that James Earl voice. Use that. Let it project. Let us hear you. Let us know you know what you're talking about. And uh, Brother Lord, I think you're very personable. Your personality exudes you. Use that to your advantage. So that is my evaluation. God bless you. We give honor certainly to all that 
honor is due. Um, my portion was the prayer, the affirmation of faith, scripture reading, as well as um, one of the ministers, uh, Minister Collins, and the benediction, which we haven't gotten to. So let me keep it very general. When you're up, folks, the people have to believe that you believe what you're saying. So eye contact is very, very important. Uh, people read body language. Um, so make sure that when you're talking to them, they believe that you believe what you're saying to them. Um, be about the business, but make sure you finish the business. And I say that because I saw a couple of people that as they were finishing, they were ready to pass the mic. Make sure you stay there and let people realize, I, 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 I quit, but I'm not through. I could tell you some more about what God said. You want people to realize when you're up here, through the power of God, you have the command of the floor. And people need to see you. And they're, they're looking at you, waiting on the voice of God. Uh, let me say concerning the, the, uh, the minister. Uh, they asked me to do you because they said they didn't want the, the dad. You know how that is. That's a, well, let me tell you what I enjoyed, uh, Minister Collins. I enjoyed everything, and I'll tell you why. Uh, the preacher that brought me up said, always preach with the ability that God gives you. So in spite of what you heard or saw before, I believe what I saw was Isaiah Collins. And that's who God anointed. God doesn't anoint an act, but he anoints the real you. And I like how you fill in the blanks with a lot of stuff. And you said, this is what happened then, and this is what was going on then. That's very important to people because, let's face it, there, years ago, uh, before African Americans had a lot of education, they just really had to accept what was here. But now, because of the grace of God, a lot of people are uh, more educated, and, and they are used to people sitting there, and they're, they're sitting and hearing lectures. So I like how you feel in all of your information. And then when you're through, you are finished. I appreciate that. To the, the gentleman or whoever it is that's going to do the uh, benediction, let me just say this, and uh, I hadn't, hadn't evaluated because I hadn't done it yet, but just a, a word or two. The benediction is the last opportunity for the people in the church to hear anything about the word of God. So I don't want you to rush it. I don't want you to just say, well, they just gave me that. I'm going to say something and sit down. I want you to understand be compassionate and passionate about what you do. Make it what people want to say. You know what? I didn't get saved this week, but I enjoyed myself, and I'm coming back next week because I feel pretty good. So God uses the benediction just like any other part of the service to make people understand, I love you, and I want you to be saved. So I thank God for this time. The Lord bless you real good. Amen. I also helped to evaluate the uh, prayer, the affirmation of faith in those scriptures. In the prayer, it was a team prayer. The only thing that I, I wanted to say is don't say amen until the last person prays. It flows from one person to the other. Okay, and then as Elder Hoban had mentioned, eye contact. I know we're used to when we're praying, but sometimes we need to open and see. Open our eyes, look around and see. There might be, the Lord might give you something about someone in the audience when you look up that you can include in that prayer. So just take a glance every once in a while, even if you're praying. I know it's our, you know, we pray with our heads down and our eyes closed. But every once in a while, look up because maybe one person had an eye contact during the prayers and then in the scripture readings take your time pronounce the words but also let us know where you're reading from i know we had uh outlined it was the seventh epistle but there might some be someone here in the audience who didn't know what book the seventh epistle is so be sure to let us know what scripture you were reading from. God bless you.
God bless each of you. Um, my other evaluator who was helping me had to leave early, so I will speak on behalf of both of us. Uh, we had the privilege of evaluate, evaluating those who did the special occasions, and I've already turned those sheets in, but I will say a few things. Uh, one of the biggest things is to make sure that the topic that you are given, the scriptures that you read, matches those topics. Uh, that is very important that we don't get things that are off topic because then people do not understand where you're coming from. Another thing is eye contact. As uh, Sister Yancey just stated, eye contact is essential. Uh, even when you are reading scriptures, you need to be able to, as I'm doing now, look up, look down, look up, because that lets the audience know that you are trying to captivate and capture them into where you're trying to take them to. So we want to make sure that we give eye contact. Uh, and one of the last things is that when we are wrapping up and when we are finishing, that we make sure that we stay on point. Praise the Lord, everybody. The Lord. Amen. All those great preachers whatever you want to call them, amen, they all preached, and they all did a phenomenal job, amen. amen. They've always told me that good preaching, it'll make you want to preach, two things, they said make you want to preach, they said good preaching and bad preaching, ain't that right, Superintendent? And they all made me want to preach, I ain't going to do it, but they all made me want to preach because they were all phenomenal. Uh, our first, Pastor Holman spoke on my son, Isaiah, and I'm just going to say I agreed with everything he said. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, this is real simple. Uh, Jasmine Parks did a phenomenal job. Marquellis Vance, phenomenal job. Pamela Hampton, wonderful job. The only thing that I've been trained and I want to add is that you all had great topics with great substance. You all, for the most part, had great eye contact. You can work on your eye contact, and I'm kind of summing them together because they was all so great. Uh, work on your eye contact, and you got to do that in preparing when you study, so you're, you already have some information within you of what you're going to be talking about because you will lose the people with good substance if they can't connect with you. And one of the ways they're going to connect with you is not your great message just looking down, but you got to be able to connect with them and draw them in. And that also lets people know that you are prepared. Amen. And one thing you also want to watch, I don't care how great your sermon is, uh, when you're given time, when you're given time, you can't go by filling your Cheerios. Uh, you're better off letting the leader say, take two more minutes than you taking them on your own. Praise the Lord. So just kind of be mindful of your time. Some of you did great with your time. You could do a little bit. Just kind of watch that and be careful with your time. But you all had great messages and great substance. And whoever you all's pastors are should be very proud of you all. That's all I got to say. church say amen. amen give the lord a hand and clap of praise everybody amen. amen 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 this has been just a wonderful setting and i'm just so glad to have been a part of it praise god we certainly want to appreciate and celebrate each of you who have come praise god to uh, encourage these students praise god amen uh, is there any family of the students that are here I any family of the students that are here all right, all right, all right. Amen, amen. Come on, family, stand up. If you're here to support your family, stand up. Praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Praise God. Family support, praise God, is definitely important in ministry, and we want to appreciate you so very, very much. All right, praise God. Amen. Uh, Dr. Sylvester Cannon is coming at this time. He's going to come with uh, announcements, praise God. Amen. He... Uh, is going to come and following him, praise God, uh, we will have our dean to come, praise God, amen. In fact, amen, I'm going to ask 
Praise God, Dr. Cannon, amen, to just bring up the dean when he finishes, all right? God bless you and God strengthen you on today, praise God. Amen. God bless you, sir. God bless each and every one of you beautiful expressions, messages, amen, and I often say those persons that shared on today in the form of the word of the Lord, Amen. I didn't teach them all that. <laughs> amen. They were somewhat prepared before they got to me. So, amen. But at this time, I'm going to call up Superintendent Benson, my friend, my brother, and my leader of the Sunday School Department. Superintendent Clarence Benson. Let's receive him. He has a special announcement. Thank you, Dr. Cannon. God bless each of you on this afternoon. Can we give the Lord a hand of praise? <clears throat> He's given this opportunity. Thank God for our dean, Dean Howard, and serving to the leadership in and out of the Lord's people on today. It is a blessing that we are here. I want to uh, start by saying I appreciate this opportunity again. And the word of God said to do what? In 2 Timothy 2 and 15, to do what? Come on. Somebody says, study. All right. Rightly. Praise God. Amen. And that's what we are about here. Amen. Studying. To show ourselves approved unto who? God. But God used men. Amen. To help us to advance kingdom and do the work of the Lord. So I stand before you today to do a little presentation as, as brief and swiftly as possible. How many Sunday school superintendents do I have here today? I know some are here. Superintendent of Sunday schools. Amen. Will you stand? Please stand. All right. Wonderful. Whether you're jurisdictional, local, or whether you praise God or district level. Amen. Thank God for you on today. We are in the process in which you've heard it come and been talked about several times now before. It takes time to, again, amen, bring those things which are necessary for growth and for benefit of God's people. It takes a little time to hone those things out and bring them together. But we presented uh, with uh, our leadership of our church as well as, amen, a bishop and um, those superintendents and pastors and we presented something that I believe will be beneficial to our jurisdiction and to partner with Northern Mississippi uh, Biblical Training Seminars. And that is, amen, uh, a teacher certification program. And that thing in which it will help to edify and bring uh, help to our local churches and help those teachers, amen, be able to help their uh, pastors and to be better at teaching Sunday school. Now, along with that, I want to say to you that we are looking forward to having an opportunity to encourage and to uplift each and every last one that will participate in this uh, curriculum. And it's the mission of this curriculum, let me say that, is praise God, is to uh, aim for all Sunday school teachers to be certified through the department training courses and also that we will uh, have high quality training uh, for each and every last one of the teachers that there will be scriptural knowledge that will be given and foundational principles certainly and practice, practical wisdom for students and uh, teachers alike. We talked about some classes and courses that we're looking to implement and again it's a process. I'm going to ask um, those that have been working with me to stand if you would and that in the person of, of Dr. Cannon and uh, Dr. Curry and uh, praise God for uh, uh, Dr. Stanley, amen, that's working with us. A few others that are here, Lady Benson, if you would stand. Praise God for uh, our field representative, field representative Virgil, if you would stand, if you would, certainly. And this is not all of the persons that have been working with us, just a few of them along with the dean, but 
on a personal note, these are some of the persons that have been working with us to try to bring this into fruition and to bring it to our uh, biblical training institute and that way it can go into the uh, local assemblies. Now also, why don't you stand, uh, why don't you, uh, I'm, I'm trying to get all this together up here. Uh, Lady Washington as well, amen, and others. So I want to present this in such a way uh, that you would understand what we're looking to accomplish. And some of the courses and that we've already have really lined out and hopefully they will come into play uh, with this institute. And it is the history and significance of Sunday school. And also there's the foundation of knowledge of Sunday school. Uh, we have the principles of teaching and learning, uh, student engagement and interaction, technology that will be integrated into this, and also evaluation and assessment. Uh, what is all of this coming from? We understand as we've taken this opportunity given to us, afforded to us by uh, our Bishop, Bishop Dean, we see the need that Sunday school teachers are better equipped and also we receiving from our national church the work that they're doing. And many of you probably have already uh, heard about or experienced the TIAC program. It's a wonderful program. And we've talked to leadership in our national church. Since we already have such a great institute going here in northern Mississippi, oh, I need somebody to holler out, really. Uh, we thought it befitting that we also implement the, these opportunities here in northern Mississippi to advance, praise God, our teachers and students alike to be able to teach the word of God better than you already have been teaching the word of God. So we're looking forward, amen, to you joining when it is rolled out. We're looking forward to you joining and taking the opportunity to advance your Sunday school classes, your local churches, to be able to benefit the pastors and people that are in those assemblies. God bless you. You may be seated. God bless you. We certainly thank you, amen, for allowing us this space and opportunity to share what we're looking forward to do. Let me also add this little side note, amen, that we are looking for, to uh, bring in, and that is, uh, we talked to our bishop about it, but that is Life Academy. In Life Academy, there are a lot of other opportunities that will be afforded from professionals that uh, in various areas of, of life, whether it is financing, uh, family literature, uh, liter uh, family uh, marriages and things of that nature, we're looking to advance Sunday school in such a way that it can really be impactful to you personal. We want to wake this sleeping giant up and that it will really do the job, amen, that it has been designed to do. God bless you again. Thank you again, Dean Howard, for this opportunity. God bless you, Dr. Cannon. And thank all of you that are working with us. Be patient with us. Pray for us. For our endeavor is to do the will of the Lord. God bless. Beautiful. God bless our Superintendent Vincent. Amen announcements. Amen. Uh, Pastor Howard wanted me to announce that there is this month is colorectal cancer awareness month. Okay. Amen. There's a giant inflatable colon outside on the grounds. Uh, you may go by that from 12 to 2 so you may receive information uh, from that. Uh, students or program participants Please see Miss Stanley, Miss Missionary Stanley. Please raise your hand. Amen. To receive your evaluations. All right. All right. The form for graduation is out there in the entrance where you signed in. Please go by and give your measurements for graduation. All right. Uh, the tuition fees. Tuition fees, if they have not been paid, please see Sister Mary Yancey. Please raise your hand, Ms. Yancey. All right. Assistant Dean, Missionary Washington, would like to invite you to the Women in Ministry class. 
on Saturday, April 6th. That's next Saturday at 12 noon. And the special guest will be our very own supervisor, Mother Mary Scott. And Zoom ID, I'm sure that will be presented later, but it's 864 3597 5486. Let's not forget the NMBTS commencement exercises that will be held Saturday, June 8th at 10 o'clock a.m. That's the Saturday following our AIM convention, our jurisdictional AIM convention. Please join our president and chancellor, Bishop Dean, and our Dean Howard in this momentous occasion. Please remain after the benediction for a delectable luncheon that has been prepared especially for you, you, and you. God bless. We're going to present our dean, awesome man of God, anointed, amen, not only in the pulpit, but for administration. Let's stand and receive our dean, awesome man of God. God bless you all today. Come on, give the Lord one more hand of praise. Please be seated just for a moment. We're getting ready to uh, go to another phase of this service, which I call launching. So we will continue uh, fellowship uh, in our dining facilities. Let's give our Master of Ceremony a, a wonderful round of applause. None other than Superintendent Samuel Sago. He does a masterful job in a whole lot of areas. Uh, I do want to say that he will be our commencement speaker this year at our graduation. So we are looking forward to hearing him. You did notice that we did uh, change our graduation date uh, from April the 20th, which would have been uh, a few weeks from now, but we moved it to uh, June the 8th. June the 8th at 10 a.m. at the state headquarters. And one of the reasons we moved it because uh, April is such a uh, busy, busy time with our district meetings, our um, uh, April call and other uh, events. So we didn't want to tax out our, our leadership, bishop and uh, supervisor as they will be traveling across the jurisdiction. So hopefully we can adjust our schedules uh, and it does give us a little bit more time to uh, make sure that our graduation is of excellence. And so we look forward to seeing you at our graduation this year, June the 8th, in Clarksdale, Mississippi. Uh, he did also mention, I'm just kind of reiterating a couple of things, uh, there is an inflatable colon outside. If you have never ever seen one, then it's, well, as soon as you walk out the door, you'll see it right across the street. And uh, the health team that's over there is welcoming you to just walk through it. And uh, they do have other information for you. It's always good to, um, you know, we go and look in the mirror and see how our eyes and how our face looks. But sometimes we need to know what's going on on the inside. And uh, so that's a, a way to kind of give us an idea of what goes on inside of our body. So they'll be very, very happy uh, to have you to go through and uh, visit them, uh, you know, right before you eat <laughs> uh, or right after. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, well, did you enjoy yourself today? What a wonderful, wonderful, I'm telling you, man, I feel good right now. And it is, it is always uh, appropriate to understand that the Word of God is the main course of any service. And I'm telling you, we ate good today. We ate good today. Amen, amen. And these uh, speakers were awesome. And I just believe that they were just a, a sample of the wonderful uh, anointing that we have uh, among our students in this class. So let's give all of our students a hand for everything that was done, every song, every scripture, every expression. And how about that skit that we saw? That was an awesome uh, rendition of uh, explanation of our courses. 
Uh, God bless uh, Missionary Stanley who put that together. And uh, when she pitched the idea, at first everybody was kind of quiet on Zoom for a second. I said, okay, <laughs> all right. But I tell you what, God gives what, us what we need. Amen. So we thank God for her and the team. And uh, I'd like to say uh, uh, Dr. Johnson, who, who is, is in a lot of ways doing so many things. And she is the set designer for the skit, among other things. Uh, but she put all that together. I said, wow, you <laughs> I mean, detail. <laughs> but uh, I, that's just an ex uh, example of the type of work that's going on in our school. And also, I want to also reiterate that um, our superintendent of Sunday School is preparing, uh, along with his team, to launch uh, that wonderful Sunday school training uh, uh, system of courses. So we're looking forward to that. Yeah. We're growing. We're adding a whole other department, a whole other wing. <laughs> uh, so we thank God for all that's been said and done. Let's stand at this time. We're going to ask our, uh, uh, let me look at the program, see who's doing the benediction. He's already been evaluated before he got up. I mean, that's amazing. Um, but as he comes, uh, as Minister Avery Johnson comes, um, I want to thank God for our cooks. I know your nose is already experiencing uh, what's going on over there, but let's give a real rousing applause for the, our cooks. They can hear you already. And I especially want to thank God for Pastor Mac Jameson, uh, the fish that that y'all going to eat today was is fresh fish. I put it that way. He just caught it. I saw a picture. <laughs> and so you ain't got to worry about where it come from. Came straight from the water. I, I say if he he would have been one of Jesus' disciples the way he was fishing out there, boy. He, he said, <laughs> come follow me. <laughs> Praise God. So we thank God for him. Thank God for uh, missionary Lou Andrew Johnson who could not be here uh, but she sent a, uh, a wonderful gift to help support the, the food that has been served. It's free of charge, but somebody had to pay for it. But we thank God for all of our donors, all of our supporters that make sure the school works uh, like it should. Amen, amen. Speaking of paying for it, I do want to reiterate, if you haven't finished paying your tuition, uh, amen. Will a man rob God? I don't want to go there, but I just threw that out there. Praise God. Make sure we, I think somebody said that when, you, when you're doing something, finish your business. I don't know who said that. That was Pastor Holman said that. Make sure, touch your neighbor, tell them, finish your business. Finish your business. No unfinished business among the people of God. Come on, Minister Johnson, and give us our uh, benediction. And uh, also, we will ask if you would. Okay, um, again, students, contact your representative for level one and level two to get credit for your attendance of this uh, laboratory session. Again, level two is uh, Pastor David Dixon. And who is level one? Uh, Missionary Frida Caradine. Make sure you see her so she can make sure you are noted for your attendance. Uh, Minister Johnson, if you would give us our benediction and also bless the food. Somebody already told you, didn't they? <laughs> Let's say amen for him as he comes. Thank God for our musicians as well. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's look away to the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, dear God, we come to you once again in the name of Christ Jesus. And first of all, God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for these, thy people. God, we thank you for touching us early this morning and saying, get up, my son. Get up, my daughter. I got work for you to do. God, we ask you to bless all the instructors. Bless all the students. Bless everyone that put this thing together. God, we thank you for your presence here today. We thank you for your word. Thank you for your anointing. Now, God, as we come down from this place, but never your presence. God, we ask you to go with us and go before us. Let your spirit travel with us up and down the dangerous highways. Take us home safely. God, we ask you to bless the food that's been prepared. Bless the food, bless the ones that prepared it. And the people that love God said, thank God. Thank God. Amen. What I say on the one? 
I say unto all, watch, pray, live holy every day. God bless you. Classical jurisdictions, biblical training seminars uh, since the beginning of uh, well, the semester year. Uh, last September, we have been training several students on uh, the different uh, acts of ministry, uh, different uh, uh, ministries uh, as a part of our school of learning. And uh, this is led by our uh, academic dean, Dean Ezra Howard. It's been an absolute joy. We've got several students. Uh, who are graduating this season, and today was the final work test day, if you will, where they are examined live before a live audience there to practice, to, to show the ordinances that they've learned, uh, the different acts of ministry. Now, back in the day, we used to do the actual feet washing at communion services. We sort of condensed it uh, since the pandemic, but it's been an absolute joy sharing this experience with you. Now, as you can see, education is important. And uh, this school of ministry now, I believe it's under its 53rd year of ministry uh, since its inception. We have trained and pushed out hundreds upon hundreds of uh, men and women into the ministry. And we want to keep this going strong. And we're able to do this because of generous people like you. We want to give you another opportunity. If you have not been able to uh, share with us financially and you would like to give financial support to keep this school going, we want to extend a second opportunity for you to do so at this time. If you take a look at your screen, you will see three methods by which you can contribute. You can give all methods on mobile. Starting with Givelify, just search Church of God in Christ, Northern Mississippi. Again, that's Church of God in Christ, Northern Mississippi on Givelify and give whatever the Lord should put upon your heart. You can uh, also give via Cash App. You can give, that's dollar sign Kojic, North MS. Again, that's dollar sign Kojic, North MS. If you would like to give via mail, you can mail in your contributions, write your checks payable to Kojic State Fund and mail it to 376 Sunflower Avenue. That's Clarksdale, Mississippi. Make all checks, again, payable to Kojic State Fund. And if you're giving on Givelify and if you're giving on Cash App, in the uh, ID line, make sure you earmark uh, Bible training seminars. That way we'll know where those contributions will go appropriately. Again, we want to thank you for joining us for our student laboratory session. Now, you all know it is with tradition that at the end of every broadcast, I choose, I take it upon myself to be a blessing to those of you who choose to stick around. Uh, to watch the very end. So I want you right now to go ahead and put those cash tags. If you have Cash App, put your cash tags in the comment section. I'm going to randomly bless some people today with some, how about Easter weekend money? All right, so make sure you put your cash tags in the comment section. I want to thank you, Brother Vincent Lee, for joining us. Thank you, Luther, Andre, Robinson. I want to thank you, Pastor Lamar Moore, and Lady Vanessa Moore. Thank you for joining us. Brother Tony Johnson, good to see you online. Calvin Smith, Elroy Scott, Sharita Hare, Richard Kelly, thank you for joining us. Again, we want to thank you again for joining us for our student laboratory session. This is a part of the uh, Mississippi Northern Biblical Training Seminars. It's the final student work day before the big day, our commencement exercises, which by the way, the date has changed. We've moved the graduation date to Saturday, June the 8th. It is the Saturday following the jurisdictional AIM convention. I don't know if we have that graphic lined up, but if we do, I'm gonna ask the media team if they would just put that graphic up again. Our commencement exercises uh, for this year's graduation uh, ceremony, again, that's gonna be this uh, coming June, June the 8th, that's Saturday, June the 8th, and that's gonna be at 10 o'clock a.m. And you heard our academic dean announce who our commencement speaker will be. And so I wanna make sure you're on the, on the lookout for that. Again, that's coming up Saturday. June the 8th, and that's going to be at 10 o'clock 
a.m. Want to thank you again. Hey, Sister Pass, Sister Jones is online. God bless you. Sister Blanche Starks, Collins, Bateman, good to see you. Thelma Webster, a faithful watcher of our broadcast. Want to thank you for joining us. Iola Hall, Linda Barnes is online tonight. Annie Loy, God bless you. Thank you for spending your Saturday afternoon with us. What an important weekend this is. As you all know, it's Resurrection Weekend. And we're so thankful for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the tremendous uh, sacrifice that he uh, did for on our, on our behalf, being our ultimate substitute for our sins. Want to thank God for this uh, important weekend. God bless you, Dora Wilson. Uh, Nelio Wilson is on. Raven Lord, good to see you. Uh, today, Alicia D., thank you so much for joining us. Again, we want to thank you for joining us for the final workday session of our biblical training seminars. How about these speakers today? We've had some fantastic speakers today. Good gracious, I think they're ready for ministry. Now, for those of you who don't know, who are unfamiliar with this process, following the graduation, uh, those who are on level two, uh, particularly uh, the male counterparts, they have an opportunity to be ordained at the recommendation of their pastors. And so in August, I'm sorry, in July, uh, some of those who qualify um, and they successfully go through the ordination board will qualify to be or uh, become an ordained elder in the Church of God in Christ, which is the next level after um, this particular session, after the two years of our school of learning, particularly with the men. The ladies will go on to uh, the, the, the training course for the Department of Women that's led by Supervisor, uh, Supervisor Mary Scott, and they will go through an additional training course, and then they also will go through a, a, a series of testing before they qualify to become licensed in our jurisdiction. So every jurisdiction is different. Ours is set like that. So be on the lookout this coming July. You will know who will be ordained based on uh, that listing that uh, they'll, they'll be announcing in July. Again, want to thank missionary Jenny Bradford for joining us. Dora Wilson, thank you for joining us. Joel Roberts, God bless you. Thank you for joining us again. If you would like to be a blessing to this ministry, this school of ministry is now 53 years young, and we need your financial support. I believe the floor was $25 today, and if you would like to be a blessing to this ministry again, we want to make this uh, possible for you to do so at this time. If, I'm going to ask the media team if you will just put that uh, information on the screen one more time. You can give on Givelify. Just search Church of God in Christ, Northern Mississippi. Again, that's Givelify. That's Church of God in Christ, Northern Mississippi. You can also give on Cash App. That's dollar sign Kojic North MS. Again, that's dollar sign Kojic North MS. And you can also mail in your contributions to 376 Sunflower Avenue. That's Clarkstead, Mississippi, zip 38614. Make all checks payable to Kojic State Fund. Again, that's Kojic State Fund. It's been an absolute joy sharing this time with each of you. Now, I want, I want for those of you who are staying on, remember, put the cat, put your cash tags in the comment section. I'm going to randomly bless some of you for sticking on. Listen, on uh, Saturday, April the 6th, as it was already uh, aforementioned, our supervisor, Supervisor Mary Scott, along with Missionary Diana Washington, will be hosting a Women in Ministry course. And that's going to be on Zoom Saturday. April the 6th on Zoom. And the, the theme of that uh, session is Women at Work, We've Got Work to Do, taken from the general theme by our presiding bishop, Bishop Jeju Shared. Again, that's going to be on Zoom Saturday, April 6th, and that will be at 12 noon Central Standard Time. By the way, all of this information is available on our jurisdictional Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash M, um, MS Northern Kojic. Again, that's facebook.com forward slash MS Northern Kojic. All of those details are on our jurisdictional Facebook page. I cannot wait that we are just under two months away from our jurisdictional AIM convention. And boy, it's going to be a big one. I cannot wait to reveal the official flyer for this conference. Listen, if you, for those of you who are part of this jurisdiction, as you all know, we're getting ready to go into our series of district meetings. Our chairman, Pastor Henry Walker, and the Auxiliaries and Ministries team have put together, oh my goodness, a gumbo 
uh, of great ministry and uh, classes and resources that they're going to offer this year. We've got some surprises like none other. And I'm telling you, the speaker they have selected for this year, all I'm going to tell you is just you just need to be ready. You need to bring your umbrella because there will be an outpour in Clarksdale, Mississippi. I want you to make uh, make yourselves available for uh, uh, that session in June. That's, again, our jurisdictional AIM convention. I should have had those dates in front of me. I think I do. That is June the 3rd through the 7th. And that's going to be at our jurisdictional headquarters, our Jerusalem in Clarkston, Mississippi, our jurisdictional AIM convention, again, led by Pastor Henry Walker. I'm telling you now, it's going to be a showdown downtown at our Jerusalem. It's going to be an awesome time in the Lord. I, I can't wait. I want to show it to you today, but I want to wait. I want to wait until Pastor Walker gets that out again. Now, if you go to your district meetings, for those of you who are a part of our jurisdiction, even our, our neighbors in our jurisdiction, if you would like to attend, that schedule, too, is also available on our website. That's nmkojic.org, and it's also available on our Facebook page. Again, this very page that you're watching this on, that information is available on that page. And he, along with his team, are going to be traveling to select cities to make the official announcement for this coming jurisdictional AIM convention. And can you believe it? They already have the speaker for our jurisdictional women's convention. That's in uh, late August, early September. And I'm telling you now, they got a speaker. Oh my goodness. I, I can't wait to share all of this, but it's not time yet. But I'm telling you, they have started ahead of time uh, to prepare for ministry for this jurisdiction. I want you all to make sure that you're there uh, during those times of ministry. So again, I want to encourage you to go and support your district meetings. And that information, again, about our Jurisdictional AIM Convention will be disseminated by our Jurisdictional AIM Chairman, Chairman Henry Walker, and select individuals who will be traveling to the various cities representing the AIM Convention. Don't you miss your Jurisdictional AIM Convention. Also, lastly today, our Jurisdictional Prelate, Bishop William Dean Jr., has made a jurisdictional call to all of his sons and daughters to be of great support to our jurisdiction. If you will take a look at our Facebook page, he has launched an I Love My Church, I Love My Jurisdiction campaign. All of that information is available on our jurisdictional Facebook page. And you can also visit our website. That's www.nmkojic.org. Again, that's nmkojic. Dot org and all of that information is made available right now. Again, I want to thank you all for joining us. I'm getting ready to sign off because I smell catfish. All right, they've got a delectable country luncheon uh, that's going on directly to my left. I want to thank my co-host today, Dr. Nina Johnson, who did an, ex an excellent job in uh, assisting with coordinating this event today. Certainly want to thank missionary Diana Washington, who oversaw and coordinate this entire event today. Got to give a shout out to Dean Ezra Howard, our academic dean who is in his third year of leadership. Want to thank our dear sister, Nikia Hayes. Come on, Nikia. Uh, you got to get mic'd up. I'll just press this button. We got a few more minutes. Just press. Oh, I think it's already on. Yes, just, just snapped this on. This is District Missionary Dr. Nikia Hayes. Uh, she is one of our uh, tech team supports. Come on, have a seat real quick. All right. Um, Thank you for welcoming me. Yeah, come on, just, just just let the people know who you are and what you do in the school. All right, as he said that I am Nikea Hayes, uh, part of the Northern Mississippi Biblical Training Seminars. I'm one of the ones that helped to set up the classes, uh, the software system, enroll the students, and help put the syllabus up there, the assignments, that type of thing, the technical. Yeah. Do the work in the background. Yeah, I, and she is a hard worker. By the way, this is... Doctor, you know, you, 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 just, you, you just can't let that, that, that just roll off the tongue. It's Dr. Nikia Hayes. She is not only us uh, well-educated, learned, but uh, she is a dynamic speaker. And speaking of which, her district meeting is getting ready to come up in just about a week or so. Yes. The Holly Springs District, led by Bishop Albert Pass. Yes. Please let us know what's oh, coming up. Oh, man, yeah. yes. Our, our district meeting is actually the... 15th through the 18th on that 15th yeah. we're going to have our pre-musical elder uh lynn ivy and yeah. recently appointed elder ricky rain he's wow. assistant minister of music to elder wow. ivy oh man the choirs are going to come in and you talking about some good old-fashioned gospel music so yeah. 
Absolutely. some toe tapping music. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be good. And then on that Tuesday night, look at me doing a full commercial for my hey, district. Hey, hey, Holly Springs, y'all got it made today. I'm giving y'all free real estate. Yeah, go, go ahead. Go Since right it's on. free, I'm going to take advantage free. of go it. Right it's all right. <laughs> go right ahead. So that Tuesday night, we're going to have youth night. We have designed some district T-shirts, and we're just going to come in there and uh, be a little relaxed, but we're yet going to let the Holy Ghost take control. Elder Jonathan Wiley, ooh, that man can play some type of good talk. Oh, yeah. And I love to see him dance. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be preaching on that Tuesday night. But yeah. don't stop there that Wednesday night. Yeah. That yeah. Wednesday night is women's night. That is the night what they people typically say my night yeah. or whatever. But, Chris, you want to take a guess on what we're going to be wearing that night? Uh, I think y'all wearing pink. I'm That's just assuming y'all wearing That's pink. That's it. Yeah. We're going to wear pink. That is my favorite color. And yeah. I know most people on their night, they wear white. But I'm the youngest district missionary, and I yeah. can be a bit non-traditional. So. That's all right. And how about the last night? Who's that last, last night? night? You got to come on back for that last night to hear my pastor, my superintendent, the bishop, Albert G. Pass. That's right. That man has a word. You know, he, he may not be uh, one of those that's giving away houses and cars, but he is concerned about souls. And when I tell you, I've, I learned how to do an altar call under him. Yeah, absolutely. And, and good ministry. You haven't preached a good sermon until you, you have done that altar call and try to convict somebody. I tell you, I, I, what I learned from Bishop Pass, I know, I know we're talking about a myriad of things right now. But one thing I've learned in ministry is to memorize my scriptures yes. when I make an appeal. I learned that from him mm -hmm. um, because it, nowadays everything is recorded. People want to know everything. I know, yes. I know you're saying this. Where can I find this? And so I, I make a habit yes. of yes. memorizing it. So shout out to Bishop Pat. Right yes. And, you know, I, that's a good practice. Since yeah. we're talking about biblical training seminars, when you all to call. You want to make sure you have scripture <laughs> to back up what you're talking about. So Absolutely. like if I'm on my iPad, I actually have a page with all to call scriptures Absolutely. to help jog my memory. So Absolutely. Yeah. It yep. has been an absolute joy sharing this time with you again. Our district meeting is April the 15th through the 18th. April the 15th through the 18th. Now yes. our district meeting uh, that's the Clark Cell District. It's April the 17th through the 19th. All okay. these conventions are running concurrent. Yes. Um, but, uh, and so I may get a chance to get over there to her night. Uh, but they are literally neck, back, We're back to back. There's six conferences going on uh, within the span of one week and the same uh, following, uh, following. So we want to give a shout out to all of our district superintendents and district missionaries. We are fervently praying for you as our ministry will span 12 cities during the month of April. Thank God uh, for ministry and the vehicle of technology. We get a chance to do this uh, because of your generous support. If you want to make a final appeal, uh, we were able to do this today because you all have munificently given to this program now in its 53rd year ministry originally led by uh, the late superintendent Frank Howard and of wow. course our, our jurisdictional prelate yes. Bishop William Dean. They too started this along with Bishop Scott. Bishop Scott gave them the vision and they literally came up with this program yes. and now we're 53 years strong and uh, if you would like to be a blessing to this ministry now kid we've got three ways to make be a blessing. Hey, Just let us know how we you can, can give. You can give I most people have it downloaded on their phone. Uh, cash app, y'all know y'all be sending money to other folks. Go ahead and give it cash app. The cash tag is Northern Mississippi, uh, Kojic Northern MS, yes. Kojic Northern MS, MS. Uh -huh. in the cash tag for cash app. You can even write us a non rubbery check. We'll take it as <laughs> long as you eliminate the rubber. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hey, it costs to be educated, and I right. will not tell you how much I spent on my doctor degree. So wow. education costs. So support this cause. Um, I'm telling you, the people, the the students here, they're actually learning. So if, if you don't have a big seed to sow, just give something. Yeah, we one dollar, two dollar, three dollar. I hate to do auctioneer. Like, give us sure. something. <laughs> Any gift is appreciated. Every dollar you give helps us further the gospel of Jesus Christ and training in the School of Ministry. We're getting ready to, uh, to launch our 2024 yes. and 25 school year. Listen, that information is available right now. Registration is not open just yet, but we do have details about the coming school year. You can visit mm -hmm. our website. That's www.nmbts.com. 
nmvts.com. Again, again, that's nmvts.com. You can see all of the courses. We have um, a ton of courses that you can select from. It is replete with options. And so make sure you go yes. by our website and check that out. want to thank again our academic dean, Dean Ezra Howard. I, I said like you were about to say something. Go Did right you uh, mention the graduation? I, I mentioned, but go ahead and reiterate. Yes, the graduation is uh, June the 8th at 10 o'clock and our commencement exercise speaker will be Superintendent Samuel Sago. That's and a that man is. Machine. Woo, and then yes, when sir. the old speak get the moving, he get the dancing. <laughs> Yeah, they say a good, good preaching make you want to preach, but good shot make you want to dance. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Listen, you don't want to miss it again. That is the Saturday following our jurisdictional AIM convention. Yes. And listen, I cannot stress enough. Make sure you make plans. Make ready mm -hmm. uh, for our jurisdictional AIM convention June 3rd through the 7th. I cannot wait to share the official flyer with you. Ooh. They've got a Oh, my goodness. Hey, I've run out of adjectives to describe. Now, if you grew up in the church, you, yeah. this, this was I the just, meeting. I, I, just, I just can't announce it just Oh, I could, but I'm not going to do it. Okay. I, want, I want Pastor Walker. Uh, I want you to go to your district meetings and support your district meetings. Mm -hmm. And when he comes, I'm going to let him announce that to you. And then we'll officially reveal the flyer. All I got to say is you just need to be prepared. Ooh. It's going to be a convention like none Okay. Another. Yes, and you know, good. back in the day, we used to have conventions where um, people thought uh, just throw the children on the altar and wasn't engaging with them or anything. But yes. now we know better and our yes. methods are better. Absolutely. So they Absolutely. have the scholastic motivational ministries and yes. uh, oratorical contests. It's just so much for your children to learn and engage. It, it not only prepares them in the Christian world, it Absolutely. prepares them for to be college and career ready. Like. Absolutely, and listen, as you all can tell, based on the culture, what well, the way things are headed in this world, now more than ever, it is incumbent upon all of us okay. to get educated and to train our little ones while we have an yes. opportunity to do so. There's, you can you can feel the urgency yes, to yes. go out and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that's why this school is here, to train men and mm -hmm. women, boys and girls, on how to disciple, on how to uh, put together a message. I learned how to put together a sermon in this school. I didn't, yes. didn't realize how important that was, but it was through this school of ministry mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that I got my learning. I know you learned a lot. <laughs> well, I didn't actually, I didn't go to the school. I tested out. Okay. <laughs> I'm okay. a bit of a nerd. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I just, I, this was years, many years ago. I yeah. started um, accepting my calling at 16. Wow. And wow. so, um, my pastor then, the late elder E. H. Hempel, mm -hmm. recommended me to Mother Gaston. Ah, uh, okay. Mother Gaston Love said, Mother Gaston. Yeah. he said, I have a missionary I want you to give a license to. Yeah. And so at 16, you know, have you ever heard of that? And so Mother it's Gaston called of. me and she said, I want to give you a license. Wow. But my district missionary at the time told me, you know, I wasn't quite ready. Yeah. And so being obedient, I waited. But at, when the time came, yeah. I asked him, could I, I said, if you allow me to take the test. I could pass the test without the class. Wow. Well, so by the way, so we do all we do have those options um, for those of you who are interested. And so, however you do it, um, there's always it's always going to be a more learning, even after you get your license, yes. after you get your um, your elder's license. It's always more learning. No one is. Yeah, and it's, let me, it's never complete. And let me appeal to the women. Yeah. You know, I know sometimes people will say, "I ain't got to have a license to show I've been called." Yeah. No, you don't. But it validates your it calling. Validate. You don't have to have a driver's license to drive a car. But if the officer stops you over, if they question if right. you know the rights and the rules of it, that license show that you have been properly trained and educated. Absolutely. So, so we want to encourage you, if you're on the fence, if you're wondering, mm -hmm. should I sign up next year? The answer is absolutely yes. yes. Again, that information about pre-registration, early registration is getting ready to come up in just a few weeks. Again, if you just want to see, want to review our courses of study that we offer now, uh, goodness, we had a lot of classes. We had finance. We added a finance class. Oh, man. Let me and tell you. then oh, uh, finance, it was, yeah. I'm sorry, I get yeah, excited so about love, it. I, I love finance because I'm a, I'm a numbers guy. Are you? And, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Who was, who was our present? Uh, uh, Sister so Charles Charles Harris. Harris. And she works at, what, Bank Corp South? Yeah, Bank Corp So you South. know she know about money. She is. <laughs> she is. Seriously, she just received 
uh, a reward uh, from the national, I forget what association that is. Oh, um, credit counseling or something. Yeah, she, she won like the highest honor of the year mm -hmm. like, of the whole country. And uh, we have we have these kind of people, this caliber of people in our school of ministry. Yes. And so again, we want to encourage you when that information becomes available, go to our website. That's nmvts.com. And you can sign up in just a few weeks and prepare yourselves for the for the fall semester. Uh, Dr. Nakia, any final words before we go on? Oh, there? thank you, Elder Coleman. This yeah. has been really great. And as he's emphasized, this, this, this school is great. I would encourage everyone to take advantage of it. And if you have hesitation of any type of reservation, it could be uh, financial or whatever. We, we dealt with that with the Acts of Life class. Yeah. There are scholarships avail available. And if the lepers had waited until they saw proof, they, they, they wouldn't have got, yeah. gotten what they needed. So as they went, yeah. they were healed. I'm not, so I can't just talk about apply. the word too much because we'll be here another 20 minutes. Okay, okay. I, no, I get excited about the word. <laughs> just apply, just apply. Just and apply. And take it one step at a time. Listen, it has been our absolute joy to share this time with you on behalf of our jurisdictional prelate, the Honorable Bishop William Dean Jr., a wonderful supervisor who we saw today. Yes. Mother Mary Scott yes. and all of us here at Mississippi mm -hmm. Northern Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. I'm Chris Coleman. And I'm Nikea Hayes. Have a good day. We will see you at AIM. God yeah. bless. God bless you.